Is that too loud? Is that okay? It's a little bit quiet to me. You guys? Okay. It's a little quiet. Do me a favor, G. Uh, on the right side in Discord, uh, look for the sounds icon that has the blue uh, speaker icon. Okay. Uh, right click on it and like set nickname or something like that. Change nickname. There you go. Uh, change it to sounds dash J or something like that so we can tell the difference between who's who. You can do the same to your own if you want to. Sounds B or something. Okay. Uh, I'm ready when everybody else is. Okay, let me bring the map back up. Mm -hmm. You guys uh, had uh, made your way into the villa uh, through the yard with the crazy guy and his dogs uh, inside with the two thugs that attacked you in the main hall, and then you guys heard some voices upstairs. So you guys had ran up that way and saw a, uh, a fight already in progress between some more guys in black leather armor who you obviously know by now are interims, and then uh, the guys that you would assume again by now you've seen a few bodies and stuff of uh, house guards based off of their uh, their garb and everything they have the house symbol on them so um so hang on let me show the map again and it's fucking now, working again. for me great nah. damn I'll, I'll get it figured out it's, it's just pissing me off that every single time Every time I try to load anything, it's not anything you're doing, it's, it's something on my side, I'm not sure why. I was going to say, would it help if I reloaded or something? But... No, I don't think so. There, there's actually, there's one thing, it actually just loaded on the recording side. Okay, cool, it's popping in for the, okay, good. Probably because it was pre-cached. Um, there, there is one thing that I'll have you do afterwards, I just keep forgetting to, to have you do it. Um, that might help, I'm not sure if it will, but we'll give it a shot after. Anyway, go ahead, G. Okay. And so when you guys pop up there, you do see uh, there's actually four guards in front of that door. But again, this room apparently is this map is kind of tiny for actually fighting, even though it's meant to be a battle map. So uh, there's actually four guards in front of that door, not just one. And then there are three Xenorum guys advancing on the guards. So you're assuming trying to get through that door. And you heard a woman's voice from behind uh, when you guys were coming up the stairs yell, uh, the city watch is on its way. So you're assuming they must want that lady for some reason, or at least one in that room. So, is the initiative we rolled is that a new initiative, or did we was that from the downstairs fight? I don't remember. No, I don't think you guys re-rolled initiative because again, uh, you guys, if you want to, you can absolutely help. But I mean, uh, it's four to three, so it'd probably be okay. But it's all up to you guys. So if you guys want to do it again, um, we can either re-roll initiative or just go based off what we already have. I don't care either way. If you guys choose to get involved physically, so. Well, you're the DM. You decide. Um, yeah, we can just. Uh, re-roll again if you guys want to if you guys decide you want to go that way so i'm we'll be definitely getting involved so we might as well all right guys so if you re-roll it'll just put the new numbers up there right or do i need yeah. to redo something nope you don't need to do anything um if we're oh, you, you'll be changing it to a new set of yeah exactly that's it but that, other than that everything else will be <clears> fine like it is okay so i put the round to zero do i need to do anything else nope that's it as soon as you okay. uh actually you'll ch change the round to one actually because the combat's already started so it's it already, says like, there's already on me, yeah. Already, so. yeah so now that because because my initiative changed it bounced down to me so you'll just drag the arrow up to akasha and change the round to one cool Alright. Oh, uh, second thing too, for all of the guards, change them to blue, um, or to yellow, doesn't matter. But basically, oh, we yes. know that we, well, if they're hostile to us, then leave them red, but otherwise change them to, like, if, if they're not hostile to us, or at least if we don't know if they are, then change them to blue. And all you gotta do to do that is in the combat tracker, the red skull, click it, and it'll change color. Okay. So we know the thugs are hostile to us, so we can leave them red. Oh yeah. Alright, so, again, you got uh, three Xenorims in front of you there, honey, and you and Ghost are coming up the stairs. They are attacking those guards, so it is your choice what you want to do. 
Uh, am I at disadvantage if I use my longbow? Since I'm, what is that, like, five, ten feet? Didn't, I think to... I looked that up. I think I looked that up uh, earlier on for you, and, and there wasn't anything. Let me double check, but I don't think there's any disadvantage for, sh for short range like there was for other games. Didn't there? Didn't it used to be? You, I remember you have there to being a rule about five that. Feet away, right? If, if you're if you're if you're in the square next to him, it's disadvantage, I think, right? But if you're one square away, then it's normal. I Maybe that's what it is. What we figured out. Yeah, that could be. Let me, I'll, I'll check it real quick just in case. Okay. I think it's supposed to be if you're in your melee range. Yeah. Then it's disadvantage with ranged, I think. Uh, you only have disadvantage on a ranged attack if you roll within five feet of a hostile creature, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Alright, and I'm ten, so that works. Yep, and he's just... He's not actually in that wall. They're just assuming there's enough space that they're taking up most of that area, yes, but they're not actually inside the wall. So, yes, you could hit him. <laughs> and... It hits, babe. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do that, so. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Yep, nice arrow into him. Ghost. Kitty boy's turn. It's... Is it there? All right. And ghosty... Bites and hits. Nice little hit on number five, too. That's the same one you hit, too, right? Yeah. So yeah. he takes an arrow and uh, an arrow to the back of the shoulder and a kitty bite to his, this hip right there. So. Dog bite. We got to keep the we got to keep the fiction consistent here. Fish bite. Ghost is a cat-shaped dog. <laughs> All right, and it is number three's turn. And he sees that there's people coming in from behind. So he turns around and says, Who the hell are you guys? What do you want? So, I mean, you're the closest one to him, but all he's turning around and talking to you guys, like, What the fuck do you guys want? We're busy here. I'm not going to respond. He says, uh, All right, so you always, the lucky one, G, are closest to him, so he's going to see if he can hit you. He has a mace, just like the other guy I did. So... Wait a minute. That is... Yep. Yeah. Okay. These guys actually have pack tactics, so he will have advantage on this. His friend is with my feet, so they have pack tactics, so. And it still didn't fucking help. But at least he didn't get a he dropped it one, so he didn't get a critical miss. But <laughs> And he has multi attack, so he's going to try to hit you again. And he's a complete idiot and misses again. So he turns around, accosts you, and it doesn't seem to do any good, so he tries to swing at you twice and misses. Okay, it's number five's turn. And he actually, knowing that he just, well, not knowing what hit him, but, you know, feeling some pain from the back, turns around and sees a big giant cat right there. So, he is going to see if he can hit Ghosty, but uh, none of the rest of friends are within five feet, so we won't get the back acting stuff. So. And he misses. God, these guys fucking suck. You want to try and he missed again, so, yeah. Alright, it's your turn, Zucko. Alright, I am close enough to strike number five, is that correct? Uh, yeah, you could hit any, any of those guys. Alright, I'll use my refined quarterstaff on number five. Okay. Same one that's already been whomped on already. Yeah, but it's going to be uh, non-lethal, so if it kills him, I'm going to have to hold back just for a sec. Okay. Alright, so just to whack to knock him out, and it hits. Nice. Yep, so you get a nice whack on his head. He's looking, let me see. Yeah, he's definitely uh, not doing so well. He's, he's bloodied for sure, so. 
Any bonuses for you, sir? Uh, not at this time. Okay. G? Um, I'm going to, uh, still having my spear in front of me for, from, uh, you know, where three was trying to hit me and just kind of dodging out of the way. I'm going to feint a swing at him, and instead I'm going to stab nine in the back because he hasn't turned around. He's probably engaged with six, but because he hasn't acted yet, uh, I'll have advantage on it from, from him not acting in this combat so far. Okay. Um, Just pretending to swing at three, and then and then instead swinging at uh, and stabbing at, um, at nine to hit him. And that one hits nine. All it right. does it. All right, so I'm gonna have three do something actually. Um, and they're humans, so I'll get my human uh, favorite enemy thing. Okay. Nice. For twenty damage at him. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, Marshall Strike, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the same one. I'm going to just Marshall Strike on him. Okay. So that was definitely a good stab on nine, right in his upper back, over to the side a bit. And that second uh, uh, butt end hits too. Nice. Another whack on the top of his head over there. And let me see. He is... Yep, he's hurting too. He's a, uh, uh, you bloodied him with that one there. So I mean, still dangerous, but he definitely felt that one for sure. So any bonuses for you? Uh, well, that was my the martial strike is my bonus action. Um, but I am going to just as an item interaction, a free interaction. I'm going to uh, the door that we're beside. Um, I, I don't want us to get surrounded, so I'm going to kick the door, like you know, try the doorknob, but basically kick the door open if it's if it's not locked. Um, that's beside okay. me, so that I know if there's more coming. All right. Oh, and also when you went to go uh, swing that first guy, number three, I uh, thought you were gonna hit him. So he actually he actually got a good roll. He I made him do a dex check, but he was gonna fall over because he was trying to dodge your attack even though it wasn't going at him. But he, he saved himself. So, all right. Now let me check that door for you. That is okay. You said that the door on the east side, the one that the guard is standing in front of, that that one was already open, but the other two were closed, right? Yeah. Okay, I, just, I wasn't sure if it was actually open or not. I just want to make sure that if there's anybody, you know, if there's more bad guys in there, because uh, we heard screams, and I think they were coming from, from the east, but I'm not 100% sure. That is where it sounded like we came from. It, it, it sounded like a, a woman, you know, yelling uh, from the room behind, behind the guard. The guard and and okay. the door, the door is open behind those four guards. There again, there's four of them blocking the door. Okay. So, let me see. Good job with the tokens too, by the way. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Um, with this one, it was easier because again, you showed me like one of them. I had to change the name again too because it didn't want to work. So that actually helped a lot. So, yeah. and then I remember to put them from the combat tracker, and you know, so that way if, if they're involved in the in the action, that that, that way they'd actually show up like they're supposed to. You know? Yeah. So. One of the special characters, I think it's square brackets or something like that. Uh, Fantasy grounds can't read it, so if you change the if you just change the name, then it works fine. Okay. When you are going to kick that door, can you please give me a athletics check? Sure. It is locked then. I guess, you know, I'd probably just kick it anyways. I probably wouldn't try to open the door because i got to hold my spear okay. anyway, so. Yeah, so give me athletics, please. 14. Okay. You kick it, and it does, it's not, when you kick it, it doesn't feel like it's locked because that was a pretty good one. Um, but, uh, like, so the handle didn't seem like it was stopping anything, but it feels like there's something heavy behind it, so it doesn't, you're assuming, because it, it moved a little bit when you did that. The door did move a little bit when you did that. It gave and started to move in just a little tad, not much. I mean, maybe like an inch or so, but uh, it's not a latch. So, but there is something barricading the door. Does it feel otherwise like otherwise the that, height that kick where... would have kicked it right out? Okay. Does it was so, it was the resistance low towards the ground? Like you know, like is there furniture in front of it, or was it up high where somebody's like holding their shoulder against it? When you kicked it, it felt like the, the weight or the force was distributed evenly behind what okay. was behind the door so it's okay. not it, most of the door is barred or, or not barred but there's something in front of most of the door not just part of the door okay because it, the, the four seemed to distribute pretty evenly so like it didn't rattle higher or lower the, the door didn't so cool cool i just right. don't want to get surrounded and number nine uh 
even though he got hit by you, he's still paying attention to what he's doing over here. So he's still going to try to break through the line of... And his friend isn't. Okay, so he's going to... You can, can still try to break you, through the guards there. If you wanted to, I mean, you can reveal the room to the east since the door's open anyways, and then just put the other guards on the, on the tokens there. But up to you. Because if that guard dies, presumably the others would, would try to step in. That's a good idea. You could still do that anyways. You wouldn't necessarily need to worry about revealing the room, but since the door's open anyway, then it wouldn't matter. Yeah, because you guys can see some of the room, at least, you know, behind the, the action, the guards and everything. So you look in the, into the room back there, and you do see... Okay, uh, when you look back there, you can see... Uh, you guys can see the uh, orc on there, too, right? You see a, a very nicely dressed noble woman and a, uh, orc, a half-orc guard standing in front of her. Can you guys see both tokens on the map? Yeah. Okay. So you guys can see that behind the guard. So, and... Um, Go ahead and drop the other ones on there. Remember, if they're combatants, though, they're not on the combat tracker, so it, it won't matter necessarily. It's just, you know, that's up to you on whether they're combatants or not. Yeah, they, they weren't going to be, but, I mean, I guess if I need to, you know, the the work might jump in, but... Don't worry about it. Um, not going to unless things get hairy, because the orc is the is standing very close to the lady, so you're assuming it's uh, a personal guard, so... What's nine doing? Oh, uh, give me just one sec. I'm just gotta get the other tokens on there, and then he's gonna go. So, just make sure you drag him from the combat tracker. You have six on there already, so grab eighteen, two, and eight. Okay. And if they're, you know, if they're exactly if they're inside the room and they can't reach because the door is not wide enough or whatever, then, you know, you can just skip their turn or, or you know, whatever. Okay. And so they are all, all we'll just say that they're just inside the door there. That one just uh, had broke through and kind of tried to keep him from breaking in. So it is Thug Nine's turn, and he is going to try to hit that guard there in front of him. So swings and whoa, he actually hit the guard. That's amazing. And he got the bonus. His friend is within another thug is within five feet. Oh, good hit on him too. So he brings his uh, mace up and whacks the guard on the head. The guard's wearing a helmet, but it definitely hurt him for sure. So, and he's going to yeah. That one does not connect. Him. So, it's guard number eight's turn, but he is over here. So he's just going to be, you know, waiting to push through if he needs to. Right, and six, he is the one right there, so he is going to retaliate. Okay. He's going to use, he has a long sword that he has in his hand, two-handed. And hits. On number nine. Good slash there, too. Good. And he has multi-attack, so he's going to see if he can hit him again with his long sword. And or dropped it. And that one also hits. Bam, another max damage hit too. Good one. So, yep, he hits uh, two long sword slashes into number nine, who's the one standing right there in front of him, and number nine looks like he is uh, not long for this world, that's for sure. So... Star. Two is also blocked, so he's just going to position as well as 18 and I think we are on a new round so it is Akasha's turn again mm -hmm. uh, 
water. And there we go. Oh, another one? <laughs> no. Alright. Okay. Ghosty. And I have him attack the same guy again. Okay. And Ghosty didn't get it. He missed. Damn. Three's turn. He is the one that was down here trying to hit Rob, so he is going to continue to do the same thing. And still misses even with advantage. These guys are idiots. He's gonna my AC is really high for my decks, though. Hard to hit. Okay. Yeah, you know, you said you made your guy extra tough, so... Yep, even a 15 missed. Good. Yeah, my AC um, so 17. Missed. Okay. And number five's turn, and he is the one over here that was getting bitten and shot in the back, so he is going to... Yep, nobody else is there, so he's not close enough, so he's not going to have advantage, but he's going to try to ghost again. Oh, no. What do you mean, ah. oh no? Because <laughs> he landed, but it was fucking crappy damage, so he goes and swings and just barely hits Ghost. I mean, it does connect, but it's pretty wimpy hit. Goes again. Oh, he hits again. Mm -hmm. Poor, Poor dead fish. Uh-oh. That won't hurt, though. Damn. Ghost shows heavy damage in the combat tracker now. <laughs> yeah, he's awake. He's got five points, huh? <laughs> Yeah, Eldor, it's your turn, sir. All right, I'm going to hit uh, number five again, a non-lethal. Okay. It hits. Wow, that was garbage. <laughs> but still whacks him on top of the head there. So, let's see. Any bonuses for you, sir? Uh, no, I... I I kind of want to do a cantrip, but it's an action, not a bonus, unfortunately. So I'm good. Okay. And uh, five looks like he could pretty much be knocked over with a feather. So, G, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, after continuing to bob and weave, I guess for the three of these guys, do any of them stand out at all, or are they all dressed basically the same? None of them look like, you know, they, they are of any importance. I can't tell if one of them's the boss or anything like that. Uh, can you please give me a perception check? It's actually going to be for more than one reason, but for that too. Rolled sheet. Nah, not, yeah, not that you can notice. And it's, but, I mean, you look at them, and they all have the same weapons and black armor that you've seen, maces, and, and they've got all they got crossbows on them too. They all, the other guys did too. And black armor, so, um, nothing that really stands out, but you also didn't get a chance to look real close yet because there's, you know, fucking a ton of guys in this little tiny room, so kind of a cluster of fucking people. Okay. Um, between nine and three, which one looks more wounded? I think three probably hasn't been touched yet, I don't think, right? Let me see. And nine is bloodied from when I jabbed him in the back. Uh, yeah, nine is super bloodied. He is. He's not a, He's not faring too well. And three okay. is... Uh, three hasn't been touched yet. He's still okay. healthy. He's I'm gonna, healthy. I'm gonna try to finish off nine then, especially since he's not paying attention to to me anyways. Um, Full force or non lethal? Uh, probably. I mean, I, I mean, I won't stab him through the heart, but I'll you know definitely take him down. So I mean, we we can recover him if we need to, if we if we have okay. reason to believe that this one of these might be the guy, the Erstal guy. Okay. So. So if you get like a instant death, we'll say he does an instant die then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, I'd, I would have to roll really high to get that. I don't think, I, well, I guess it depends okay. on how much damage is left, but probably not. And that connects. All right. <coughs> I think I need to, one, it'll be easier for me. And having, getting to play now, I, I get to see like some of the things that would be a little bit harder for you guys as players too. Uh, like the two damage adds that I have, if they're a human, uh, it's a, it's annoying to find each of those in my list. So uh, maybe I'll make a separate section or something like that, and then you know if that's easier for you guys, like for for uh, Norok, 
um, then that could be something okay. useful for, for him later on too, so. Ah. Yep. Yeah, you go to jab him, and it goes right through his gut, and he falls. And uh, he's still, you know, slightly breathing and stuff, but he is not getting back up. He's essentially motionless, thing on the ground. Okay, so. then I'm going to spin the, the butt end of the sphere around. Uh, no poison on the butt end, of course, but to, uh, to whack the guy that's in front of me. For 22. That one hits, it hits three. All right. Or ten, and nice. Uh, just listening to that door beside me. Uh, does it sound like there's any motion in there? I'm gonna shout over to to Akasha to check our perimeter as well. Um, but I don't hear any motion or anything from the door. It just sounds like maybe it's furniture or something on the other side. I just don't you want it to open do. and have something surprise me. Yeah, go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and do another perception check. If you want. Eleven. Yeah, with that one, uh, it's it's uh, good enough. Again, one guy, you know, down. One guy's down, so there's a little bit uh, less uh, stuff like that, or you know, um, planking noise. and shit at weapons. So uh, when you do take a second to kind of stop at that door, still looking over at the action to make sure you don't get hit, that uh, you do hear pounding, uh, not on the door, not right in front of you on the other side of the door. They're not trying to like you know, kick the door back closed. They are. It's coming from below that south of that so so pounding like like a fight like somebody punching somebody or something like that somebody's hitting a door or a wall okay all right yeah then we definitely need to check these doors uh but that's it for my turn okay and it is oh no he's the one that's down yeah guard eight he is the one inside there, so he's just gonna wait and be ready. Six is the one that's outside here, so he sees two, five, and three over here. And he's going to go for the best one that he can think of. Let me see which one's more. Yeah, so he's going to use his sword again, his long sword again, to see if he can hit number five, who was actually not even facing him. Oh, we didn't use any flanking rules either. Oh yeah, you guys should have had um, because <clears throat> those yeah those guards are technically well they're fighting the same enemy as you, so they're considered friendlies, right? They would be. So it doesn't matter answered. whether they're friendly; it matters whether they're hostile to my target. Yeah, so they're yes, they're hostile to or to, towards your target. So yeah, yeah, you guys. So on your uh, on your guys' next round, you can do this plus two, right? I think that's what we settled on was plus two if they're directly across, okay. or plus one if they're to the side, or something like that. It might have been plus three if they're directly class, plus two if they're to the side, whatever. But we can nail it down. I, I know we went over it, I just I, I didn't save it, I guess, in my one note, because I don't have uh. notes anywhere. Okay. So he brings his long sword up two-handed, down uh, somewhat at an angle, slashes through the shoulder and the neck. The head's still on there, but it was serious damage. He's, he's falling over, too. The guard pulls the sword out. And that's it, because multi-attack has to be on the same target, Reggie, to work. No. Uh, at least not for players. I don't think for... Let me let me check real quick. I don't think so. Because he has multi-attack. I just didn't know if it had to be both on the same target. So, because the first target died. Uh, that's the PC version. The... Uh, NPCs... It can attack multiple targets, unless it says otherwise. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about that. So. Well, I, I just checked from Mike Merles, who is the uh, uh, one of the, I think he's creative director or something like that. He answered it on Twitter. Okay, cool. So, uh, obviously he knew that uh, number five isn't getting back up, so he is going to turn the wrong way. Try to get a, another attack on three over here. Any hits? Not much damage, but still got a nice slash on him. Okay. And got also each waiting in the room, making sure nothing happens along with eating. Okay. Another round. Akasha, it's your turn. 
Alright, is that a door behind me? To the north? Yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, then I'm gonna back up there. I'm going to... Heal Ghost. And then I'm okay. listening Yay. at the door. Do I hear anything? Apart from your spell effect, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Go ahead and uh, give me a perception check, yeah. Sorry, I was just bringing up the page. Yeah, sorry, babe. Okay, uh, when you listen up, you don't hear anything in there. So, so you don't hear any footsteps or anything like that. So uh, from what you can tell, you don't hear anything in there. So. Ghosty's turn. Ghost. He's just. He's just gonna walk over dead bodies. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a uh, roll of plus, uh, plus two with that, babe, because he's flanked, so. Is that plus two? Because it's not. He's not directly across. Would that guard be uh, diagonally, or is he technically across? Or, well, or what about you, G? The guy, because yeah, exactly. This guy, this guy is engaged by both me and the guard directly behind him, uh, but it isn't directly across. Um, the, he, the... he wouldn't be in that wall. He, he actually would. He'd be more like, you know, that. Yeah, he's not yeah. inside the wall, so he is he's... directly across from G. Well, he's directly across from me, but I'm not directly across from Ghost, is what I'm saying. So okay. the, the guy is surrounded. He just he's just not directly. But basically, I mean, the plus two is reasonable to me. We just never nailed down the rules. So I would say probably the plus two is fine. Yeah, there's so many guys around him. We'll just go with plus two. He's not able to successfully be dexterous or defensive really when he's got you know attacks coming from all angles basically. Yeah. And it hits. enemy nice gets a nice little bite on in there uh, afk one second guys i'll be right back all right why didn't it do advantage let's see uh, i hit plus two was the advantage one clicked also? Because he doesn't have any effect on him that would have... Oh, hang on, did you... No, you hit the right one, right? You hit three. Yeah, yeah he's still alive. I, I don't know. Well, you dropped a two. I would I would say just it's fine. Maybe uh, Ghost was uh, was knitting on one of the corpse, making the making corpse biscuits. <laughs> For the, because you, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have had pounce or anything. My, my only guess is that maybe you accidentally clicked the advantage right next to the plus two in the bottom left corner or something too. Because there's no effects or anything on him that would have, uh, would have given advantage. I must have. No biggie. But, I mean, these guys are pretty. If it was a closer to a fair fight, then I would say maybe we roll it back. But I mean, these guys are surrounded. There's four guards right behind them. The orc guy, the three of us, and Ghost. Like these guys were, were pretty well screwed right from the start. And like, that's part of what I, what I was concerned about is that like Ben had originally described that there were four guards there and three of the bad guys and then three of us and then there's these other two doors and I'm sitting here thinking like, are we going to get surrounded? Like, are more of them going to swarm out because this doesn't seem like it's enough bad guys? Because there were eight dead guards in the on the floor downstairs. Um, and then these four, which means that's at least 12 guards for this house, and they only brought, uh, we killed three Zents downstairs, or just two? I think it was three. One inside uh, and two outside, something like that, right? No, it was one outside, one inside. Okay, so... the other one was the guard that was walking the perimeter. That's right, that's right, with a dog. So that means that there's only five of these bad guys. They took five bad guys to attack a well-defended house with 12 armed guards so far. I mean, they did a decent job because apparently they killed the eight downstairs, but anyway. Yeah. Back to you. Yep. So it is Thug 3's turn. And. He is. 
he's uh, again looks over at all, he kind of just looks around at all you guys and he still has his weapon out but before he swings he says one more time he's like what the hell are you guys doing here this is none of your business so again he doesn't you guys can respond if you want but uh hang on you I only saw one shadow die G if they're oh well he doesn't have pack tactics anymore anyways the other two are down were you remembering to roll it with pack tactics yeah, I was, except for I did forget on that one, but I guess it would have been okay because his friends are down. But yeah, I it wouldn't have did. mattered there because his, his friends are unconscious, so he doesn't have pack tactics anymore. Yep. So he is trying to whack you. You're still the one close to him there. And you took down one of his buddies. And first one misses, second one hits. Whacked you there decently. Alright, he's... Down. Eldor, it's your turn, sir. Ah. Oh. Alright, I'm going to switch over to uh, thug number three. Okay. And give him a good smack with the, uh, the staff. Alright. And it misses. Boo. Uh, bonus action. Can I do a bonus action on one of the dying people? Uh, and do a um, uh, spare the. Sure. Um, did you want nine or five? Uh, let's go with five. Okay. Then I am going to take nine off of here so that way he's not taking a room. So. There we go. So you stabilize him. figure both we and the cops can question him when he gets up. Well, these guys are house right. guards. We haven't involved the cops yet. In fact, that was one of the things I had. I, I took a few notes on stuff that we, we should, you know, either do or at least discuss whether we should do this week or not, if we should involve them as one of them. Okay. And you guys do remember the lady in that wall of the room behind you now saying the guards are on their way. Again, you have no idea if that's actually true or not, but that is a good reminder. There has been some... Uh, commotion going on in this house for a few minutes now so it's up to you guys how long you want to stay again that you don't even know for sure that anybody could be coming but they might be so well if it sounded like people are fighting or somebody's hitting a wall or whatever in the room south of us then i want to check that out still too oh yeah i mean there's also there's no guarantee that you guys would be you know fingered or whatever anyway but it might look a little suspicious but either way it's up to you guys though because you don't even know eventually the guards are going to come yes but you don't know if that lady was if she was just saying that to try to scare the, the thugs or not, so. Yeah. All right. And next is UG. Um, I'm going to see if I can finish this guy off again. Um, definitely still making, you know, wounds that would be lethal if he bleeds out if we don't stop him, but uh, I'm not going to aim for his head or his neck where we can't uh, talk to him if we need to. Okay. Uh, 13. Hits. Still hits, okay. He goes down. And... Yep, that's... Not too out good. Again, uh, not moving, but... Not, uh, or, or just, you know, twitching a little bit, but, uh, not moving. He's definitely not getting back up, so... But not completely dead. So. Okay. Um, then I guess with him down and still hearing motion behind this door, I'm just going to shout to the guards, are there more? I'm hearing noise behind this door. They say, uh, they say, Erstel's here somewhere. I don't know where he got off to, but he's here somewhere. Uh, and then I, I don't know who else is here. We've just been, we've just been uh, guarding a lady here, but they had a confrontation not long ago and he he ran off somewhere, but he's, I think he's still in the house. So. Shit. All right. I was hoping Erstel was going to be one of these guys, and he was just blending in then. All right. Then, with that being said, uh, well, I mean, is initiative order? Like, basically, can I op can I try to open this door? Because I used my action to stab that guy. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, we'll just do, like, the non-combat initiative order thing. You guys can just tell me what you want to do, and we'll leave the map up and everything. So, you going to try gonna, that door again? Yeah, I'm trying to force this door open. 
And if I can't, I'll get out of the way to see if Eldor can. Okay. Um, uh, athletics again, please. I'm going to take three off of there, too, because he's... You guys can bring him back up if you want to, but he's, you know, laying there bleeding out. So, but five was stabilized. So. Could I use a uh, guidance on uh, on his door smash? Um, yeah, so that would just be advantage. She'll roll it again, G. Is that how it would go? Uh, he guidance would help is a, it's a is spell. You well, I mean, oh, if, oh, if, if you oh. mean the help action, then it would be... It basically, help action would give me advantage on the roll, or I would give him advantage either way. Uh, I could do the uh, cantrip guidance, and it'll give you an extra d4 to add to the number uh, on your ability check. Okay. Uh, I rolled really low anyways. Let me see what the d4 would add to. All right, so it would be a total of 11 on hitting the door. It moved it more, but it's still blocked. So can't uh, get through yet. So the the way that it moved, I guess my question is, it's kind of hard to describe, I guess. Uh, did it, like, is it, it's not latched, as you've described it, meaning it's like, it's not that the door is locked, it's just something is is in front of it? It's barricaded. It's not latched. Okay. And whatever's barricading it is covering most, if not all, of the door. Because, again, the areas that you're hitting, the force distribution seems to be even. So it's not like a... Yeah, so it seems like there's something you'd assume, a piece of furniture or multiple in front of it. So. Okay. Then I'll, over my shoulder, I'll tell Eldor, thanks for the for the shot there. Um, I'll ask the guard then, is there another way into this room? He says... Actually, let me take a look. All right, also... Well, sorry, go ahead. Checking this door behind me. See if it's locked. Uh, yes, it is, babe. Do you have... But uh, If you have tools, you can try, but that door is locked. And uh, the guard says, no, there's actually... That's the only way. There, there's That's the only uh, door in and out of that chamber there. Or that room there. So. Okay. Then I'm going to tell him it's barricaded. I'm going to step back and... and uh, Eldor, do you mind uh, giving that some, some, some shove? Yep. You want me to give you help? Yeah. Um, you, are you, oh shit! You're gonna your... assist Eldor here. Well, Eldor is, uh, I think, because of the big size. Don't uh, G or uh, Sako, check your your features under abilities. Um, you have for your large size. Don't you have something that like for push and pull and carry? You you act as one size larger. Yeah, one size larger for carrying and all that stuff. Okay, so he's, he'd have advantage anyway. Uh, you're. I remember, I don't think you're very strong, right? Didn't you want to use dex weapons instead of strength weapons, or was it the other way around? Correct. No, you wanted strength, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't I, remember. I have a very... My strength isn't that, that high. I put everything more into the, the deck. Okay. All right, then Then uh, if you want to give me a hand, we can probably just, you know, as far as advantage, just keep bashing the door until we get it down. Sounds good. The extra, extra weight will help. Yeah. Uh, G, or we are still hearing the noise behind the door, right? Yeah, they're still they're still banging on a wall slash door slash whatever south of you. So you know, not not on your side of the wall, but you would assume whatever the other wall is, one of the other walls in that room. And babe, okay. uh, you went to go turn that, and you felt some turning and stuff like that when you were trying to pick the lock, but it did not come on latch. But you got you you can tell that uh, uh, it, it you almost got it, you know, but it didn't quite on latch. So when you tried to open that room. Want me to roll athletics again to smash the door, G? Uh, yeah, you guys go ahead and do that again. Um, if you guys are going to do it together, then just another advantage, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah if, if somebody's helping, and, it's advantage. Yeah. That time, because again, it, it took multiple times, but that time it does open enough to where you guys can... Um, now you guys can s squeeze through there, and then Eldor can like push it a little bit more to where he can get himself through. And, you know, So you guys can squeeze in there, and let me what you guys see in there not much of a room pretty small there's another door just directly oh, that's a bathroom. in front of the one open so that's a bathroom g that's why there's that curtain there and that basket and everything that's a lot of um, it's an the, old style lavatory yeah yep this is a the bathroom and then the the guard says that's the way to the guest room so and then you guys do see Feel it when you guys open up that small room uh, in front of that door in front of you, not the one that you guys open, but the other one. You see a uh, a man also in black leather armor, but he he looks a little bit different. His his stuff is definitely nicer for sure. Uh, he looks nicer and stuff like that, better you know weaponry and everything as well too. So you would assume he's a a little bit different than the other one, and he's banging on the store and trying to get it open. 
But then he hears the other door. He turns around and says, shit. Because he kind of looks out and sees that there's other, you know, the black leather armor body is laying on the ground. And he says, ah, god damn it. So he's like, oh, shit. So he is going to step up over here and say, eh. A, I've got important business here. If, if you if you let me go, I, I can pay you because I'll have a lot of money if I get if I get this figured out. I don't I don't I don't want to beef with you guys. I don't even know who you are, but I see my friends are dead, so it must mean business. I'm just gonna ask him. Then are you Erstal? <laughs> he says in the flesh. All right, then I'll just tell just over my shoulder to uh, Eldor and Akasha. I'm kind of ignoring the guards a little bit. Just uh, just take him alive, and then I'm gonna attack him. It's not my turn though, because I, I mean my turn was at the end of if we're so if we're keeping um, initiative order, then uh, I it's probably Akasha. Or, well, I guess he's probably well. Uh, the turn order it's that's up to you. It basically would go back to another turn, another round, which would lead it to Akasha or him, depending on who's higher. But it's definitely not my turn. Okay, let's see. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, this would be... The combat did stop, so we would just restart another round, right? Pretty much. That's what I'm saying. Like, it would basically be a okay. new round because we, we stopped combat for a little bit there. So, you know, whoever is at the top of the turn order. Okay. So, just... Um, at the top is still Akasha, so just move the arrow up and put the round to one? No, click the down arrow at the bottom left corner until it starts the next round. It'll be round four. Okay. There we go. We'll click it one more time so it goes back to Akasha if she's first. And yep, so uh, new rounds. Uh, you you can actually see through there because he's not he wasn't Rob wasn't standing directly in front of the door, but you just see uh, who you know must be in the fancier Zent standing at that door over there, and you could hear him say, "Hey, I just want to get out of here." So it's up to you, babe. Um. I'm gonna hold my action until he attacks somebody. And then I'm gonna shoot him with my bow. Okay. Oh, and... wait. Bonus action, I'm gonna use my uh, tail of. or uh, Hunter's Mark. Sorry. Okay. Oh, did you forget Hunter's Mark this whole time? Yeah, no, actually, I think I you was, did. Uh... I was saving it because it would have dropped by now. Oh. oh okay. So. Does it not last very long? It was only four rounds. It's a uh, yeah, but I had had it down when we had first started fighting the dude with the dogs. Oh, I see. Oh no, it's up to an hour. Never mind. Yeah, I thought it lasted for a little while. Certainly more than you know, because this has only been twenty seconds of a fight. I don't remember how long the one downstairs and how long it took us to get up here and so on. But all right, well, I'll just use it again. There we go. All right, use hunter's mark. Ghosty's turn. Ghost. It's how far from him? Ten. All right, he's gonna back up an additional ten feet until he's twenty, and then he's gonna pounce. <laughs> okay. And Going just straight to the door. <laughs> knock him down. You even remember to identify him, G. Good job. All right, and. Oh yeah, yeah, he definitely failed. So he is knocked over. And he's just gonna take his bite for the hell of it. Okay. And it's... And then he's just gonna back out the door. Yeah. Okay. Decent little bite there. Is Ghost is. blocking the doorway? No, uh, he was backing out. Where he side. is, there wouldn't be enough room for, for anybody else to get by him. Uh, let's see. There we go. Right there. Elder String. All right, yep. I'm going to look over to, to Rav and I'm going to ask him, will we let this guy out or what? We're definitely not letting him out. 
Alright, I'm gonna now block the doorway. He's not getting through. And uh, I'm gonna strike him with the uh, quarter staff, but uh, non lethal. Okay. Uh, oh, that's why he's prone. That's why he had advantage. There might it hits. Yeah, I was wondering why he had advantage, but well, uh, it wasn't. Block, it wasn't even. He he clicked it twice on accident, but uh, okay. So the the lowest one or from the advantage was a fourteen. So even if the fourteen hits, that wouldn't matter either way. He would definitely still hit. And fourteen so would have hit it twice on accident. Hit. Okay. No, yep. 14. So they all good. Yep. So go ahead and do the damage. Nice. So you go and give him a good smack in the stomach there. Kind of knocks wind out of him a little bit. Any bonuses? Uh, not at this time, but I'm going to prepare the spare the dying in case uh, Rav kills him. Okay. So that way we can kind of keep him uh, stabilized. Now, is he able to uh, get around me? I'm blocking the door for him to get out, but I just want to make sure Rav can, can maneuver. Uh, Rob could probably get around you, I'm guessing, but if you want to, you can step back because those are bodies on the ground, so you could step around them because you are uh, blocking line of sight for Akasha. So his right, exit, his side. exit would have to be the stairs anyway. If there's no window on that wall, assuming there's no windows for him to be able to get out, uh, he, the noise that we were hearing had to have been him banging on that door to the south because we heard banging sounds, right? Like banging on a wall or a door is what Ben said. So he was banging on that other door, which means that door is not going to open. His only way out of here is through us and down those stairs. So that, that doesn't seem likely to happen anyway. The description doesn't say anything about a window in the bathroom. So no, he is, uh, it's past you guys or nothing, basically. Or break into that room, but you don't even know where you can go from that room or what's even in there. But so, so yeah, essentially past you guys. So, okay. at least from the... Um, in that case, he's still prone. Uh, oh, sorry. It's Eldor's turn still. Uh, I don't know if he's after me or not. Any bonuses for you, Sako? Uh, no, that's it. Just preparing the uh, spare the dying in case uh, Rob takes him out. All right. And now it's your turn, G. Okay. What I was concerned about is if it was his turn next, he could stand up first. But since he can't stand up, I can step over him. Normally, you can't move through you know hostile uh, space, but I can step over him, um, or at least you know around him, basically kind of over him into to get inside here. Um, I'm right. going to, with him still prone, I'm just going to put a foot on his chest uh, and hold my spear to his neck, um, the, the spear point with the, with the poison still on it. Uh, I'm not even sure what to ask him. I guess we, I mean, we know that he presumably was the one that stole the, uh, the thing off of the gnome, but we don't know why. I guess I'll, I'll just, I'll hold him like that um, and, and you know, tell him not to move and then see if he's going to acquiesce. And if he's going to, we'll just tie him up and, and you know, and then question him. But I guess, so so maybe intimidation or something just to, to see if he's, you know, going to, to cooperate. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me an intimidation then, please. Jeez, I'm rolling so shitty on these. <laughs> he's, uh, he... You can tell that he looks like he understands the seriousness of the situation, but he isn't relenting. So, does he look like he's, he's squirming? Fight? Oh yeah, he, he's squirming. He's ready. So, all right. Um, was that my action to try to intimidate him? I don't think so. I mean, right? Because that would be like if you were trying to talk to him, right? Yeah, I mean, it's free, free action, action is a talk. Yeah. So, all right. Well, in that case, then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give him a good poke in the ribs with the spear, and then maybe cool. clock him with the with the other end. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, it says that he's wounded. Is he? Oh, yeah, he's advantaged because he's uh, prone still. Um, how? Like, it says he's wounded as far as you know his title there. Um, like, is it visible wounds? I can see that he's already pretty beaten up by something. Uh, yeah, he's he's taken a few licks, but nothing serious. He is definitely still. Uh... He's definitely still dangerous. You know, if he gets okay. a chance to get back up and everything like that. And again, from he moved definitely quicker than the other guys, and he was, you know, better uh, uh, weapons, and you know, seemed a little bit better than the crappy maces the other guys were using. So you're assuming he could be dangerous, but um, it, his wounds are definitely not life-threatening or impeding his movement or anything like that. So okay, and um, Did that martial strike also hit. It's a fourteen. No, the, 14 the first one hit. hit. The fourteen missed. Okay. Then that's it for my turn. I'll I'll keep um, 
yeah, I guess the probably the foot on his chest probably would be some kind of an attack. So we'll just we'll just you know take that back, uh, or at least you know that uh, the trying to hold him down basically would be uh, would be that. But uh, I'll, I'll you know just be standing there kind of readied in case he uh, tries to attack. Okay, so we'll just say that you were. Uh, so you did you tell him something like you know you're surrounded, you might want to fucking stop kind of shit and whatever. But yeah, we'll just say that that's what you said kind of thing. Yeah, your friends are dead unless okay. you want to join them. I suggest that you give up. Okay. Yeah, and he says, uh, and when you said that, he, he, well, before you jabbed him and you said that, he says, uh, my business is too important, I can't be doing that. Not even in a situation like this. So he stands back up for half of his movements. If I can get him to actually face the right damn way. And he moves so you're not, like, you know, standing right on top of each other. And he is going to try to attack you. Just let me see what's got here. Uh, do I have clear line of sight? Um, Looks like it to me. I'd, yeah, I, I'd say so because I just moved him back to where they're not on top of each other. But Rav is not in front of the door, and Erstel is still in front of the door mostly. So I don't think there would be any kind of disadvantage or anything on it. So plus, right. there's a there's a curtain behind him. He can't back up too far without going into the curtain, which would impede yeah, his I think ability to defend himself and attack. Yeah. 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 Then if he's attacking, I'm going to use my held action. Yep. Then go ahead, because he you can he pulls his pulls weapon now, uh, a short sword, and he's getting ready Disadvantage. to try to swing him off. Oh, uh, he still has. Oh, still wait a minute. I, 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 yeah, I need to take the prone off. That's why. Well, that would actually be advantaged on her attack, though. Why would it be disadvantage? Ranged. Range. She's ranged. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay. Duh. Roll again, loves. Well, hang on. So she dropped an 18. So a 7 uh, or an 18. It would be an 18 plus uh, 8. So, no. So look at look at the roll there. It says she dropped an 18. You see that? That means she rolled a 7 oh, and oh, an 18 okay. because yes, of the disadvantage. Yes. So if, with the 18, it'd be 18 plus 8. So unless his AC is better than 26, then it would hit. Nope. That does hit. Alrighty. Hush, Esther. Nice shot. Yep, so he goes to swing at Rob and ends up taking an arrow in the arm for a nice little hit. So he is going to. Yeah, that wouldn't. Yeah, none of that stuff would work, so. It's too bad you guys snuck up on him. Otherwise, he'd be a lot more fun. So he's going to try to. Rough. That one hits. And let's try again. Multi-attack. I'm lagging a little bit here, sorry. Yeah, the music is lagging. That one hits too. Okay. Couple of good wax on you there. And guard eight. Again, they're all just making sure the room, nobody tries to break in the room there. Although, wait a minute. Yeah, six is still there. All right, your turn, Bib. All right. <laughs> We're just gonna shoot him. It hits. Nice. Another good shot on him. So his AC must be 15, I think. Uh, yeah. And he is, uh, he's bloodied, for sure. Ghost is just gonna swipe at him. Missed. Or not. Or <laughs> guilty. And then just. And all the action. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is he gonna use his opportunity attack to try to swing at Ghost or no? Just use his reaction. I mean, remember he only gets one. So if he if he tries, then then that's it. 
Yeah, because he did move far enough out. That's 10 feet, so yeah, he's going to... Sorry, Becky, I'm not trying to get ghost killed. I'm <laughs> just, you know... Just, uh, <laughs> if he spends his reaction doing that, he can't use the card to hit me, so... One sec, stop preservation. Though. It's all good. I got a whole nother heal for him if he needs it. <laughs> These are Scooby snacks for ghost. Because he's really a much. dog. Yeah, I got, like, dehydrated rats in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> this is just uh, dried out some of the ones that were in our bar. Right. Exactly, there you go. <laughs> dried rat snacks. He goes to swing, but Ghost was just too fast for him. Eldor, it's your turn, sir. Alright, if I move into this doorway, am I uh, within touching distance of uh, Rav? Yeah, at an angle he'd be able to you'd, like, make contact with you, IG. Yeah. Because Erstal is in front of the door, so he doesn't, like, have you totally tried pinned up against the wall or anything. Yeah. So, Alright, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on uh, Ralph just to bring him back up a little bit. Ooh. Thanks, Eldor. Nice uh, you on clicked there? it twice again. Oh, wait a minute. Um, hang on, so, <laughs> so take three of that off. Wait, no, he, it only applied once. Because I had 18 in wounds and I have 15 in wounds now, so he, it did it right. It showed up twice to me. Does it, is it show? Oh, I see. It's because it was on. One of the thugs got healed, but he's yeah. already dead. Yeah, so. that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, I still have something. You still had the you still had the oh, thug five. targeted as well. Yeah, I just saw the, the yeah, heal roll twice, and one of them yeah. was on me while it was on the on the Zentrum. Sorry about that. So, yeah, I didn't mean to uh, do thug number five. So. Oh, no problem. Yeah, he, he's still dead, obviously, because you didn't even mean to do that. So, he's well, not dead. He's, he's stabilized, but he's still just laying there. So, any bonuses for you, sir? Oh, uh, yeah. Bonus action. I have 60 feet to cast something, so I'm going to move back a little bit here. And then I'm going to cast a uh, healing word on Rav as well. Woohoo! Okay. And he already used his reaction, so he can't do yeah, so an attack. Yeah, so he would Okay. Just a little heal there. Nice, nice. That was terrible. Shouldn't those... Shouldn't those also have a spell casting ability modifier? Yes. Why do they not? Because it's just a flat three and a flat one. Those should have your wisdom modifier attached to it, I think. For a click. Yeah. What's, your, what's your wisdom mod, Taco? Yeah. Uh, let me pull it up. You can actually see it uh, at the plus top. four. Yeah. So that should have been a seven and a five. For a total of eight more yeah. healing than what I got. That's we'll let's need to. It. Yeah, let's let's fix that. Uh, G, if you would just add that manually, or I can, anyways. Uh, I'm down to fourteen, so eight would be six. Here, I'll change it real quick. Okay. That's, yeah. That's a lot better. So, doing much better. Uh, let me put it in my notes so we don't forget, so we can fix that for Sako, because that means his other spells yeah, might not have modifiers too. Good catch, All Becky. Right. Well, yeah. I just noticed that I healed Ghost 11, so... Yeah, like, his spellcasting modifier, I'm wondering then if it's not on his other spells either, because if it, like, for things like, uh, well, Bane, I don't think uses your spellcasting modifier, but, you know, any of his other spells, like, it would definitely be something we, we'd want to have fixed for sure, not just, the heals, of course, too, but, anyway. Okay, uh, with D-Bag here still still uh, uh, swinging at me and, and uh, dancing back and forth, I'm going to go for i think i am just going to go for like a gut wound you know like a you know a, a definitely lethal where he'll he will die from it but uh not through the head or anything because we still need him to talk mm -hmm. um i'm gonna make a trip attack okay damn it and nine best all right then i'll use my martial strikes to uh try to trip him for a 21 it hits. Alright. I don't get the poison on this one. That sucks. Uh, he needs to make a, a DC 16 strength save. Okay. He got a 19. So he's up, but he got waxed. Okay. Well, so much for that. It still does the extra damage, but it doesn't knock him prone. Still a good hit, though. And he is hurting for sure. That was my okay, last he's, he's combat. He's still got some spunk left in him, but... Okay. okay. But uh, he is definitely not feeling too good, so... And... He sees... 
well, he isn't going to even be able to get past, but he is going to try anyway because he would rather try to get out of here. So you, if you want to, can use your reaction for an opportunity because he's trying to run past you guys. He's going to try to football break the line through the two biggest members of the party <laughs> between Ghost and Eldor. So, and you hit <laughs> He did uh-huh. pick, yeah. Like, that's the worst possible. Like, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't yes. have much choice, but he's, he's about as blocked as could be. And Akasha behind, if he happens to break through the giant yeah. line of animals. So, all right. So my superiority and my poison, because I'm going, you know, full on spear strike. That that hit right, seventeen. It did. Yeah. Let's see if this takes him down. Yay! Yep. Mm. He goes to run, and you give him a nice jab. It goes. Uh, in his in his chest, but you aimed for the opposite side of his heart, so he still he still has a uh, hopefully a few minutes before he bleeds out. But he is face down because you know he was running, and then he jabbed him with the spear, and he just goes and just kind of slides on the floor in between Ghost and Eldor, face down. All right, with Bleed. him face down, then I'm gonna you know pull my spear out, of course, and immediately while he's still bleeding out, uh, tie his hands, take his weapon, tie his hands behind his back, okay. um, and then uh, you know just look up at Eldor like uh, I think this is your your bag now, bud. All right, stay blessing. Then he is, um, again, stabilized, so he's not bleeding out anymore. Because with, with the Spare of the Dead, there's not even a roll, is there, G? There's not even a... No, it's automatic. Hitter. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as it's within is, 30 feet of Eldor. So you notice that the, the bleeding out of the wound stopped, and his, his, breathing, his breathing started to... is slowly starting to kind of slow down a little bit instead of being hyperventilating all right um i'm gonna look up at the guards then and uh you know just just ask them this is Urstol, right i know he told us but i want to make sure they say yep that's him all right uh with him tied up then um i guess let's before we wake him back up before we you know get him conscious again he's stabilized let's let's you know make sure that the situation is secure and then we can wake him up and question him Okay, so, um, yeah, when you guys, uh, it, when you guys look around and stuff, you don't see anybody else running in or out. You don't hear any other footsteps or anything. So, if you guys want to investigate further, you can. But otherwise, all the commotion, from what you can tell, is died down. So, you just hear the guards moving in the other room, yeah, uh, just like footsteps and stuff like that. And then um, you hear more footsteps, and you hear a voice. The, the lady's voice, and she says, "Damn it, Erstel!" She comes out this way, and she's standing in the doorway over there with, with her half orc guard just one step behind her. So, all right. Well, now I'm confused because the way you said that, assuming that that's what she actually says. Oh, gee, do you have a uh, different track, a non-combat music oh, track? Yeah. Um, yep. The way she Second says hand. that, that doesn't sound like he was. Okay, I guess I'm confused. Did she actually say that? Like, because that sounds familiar. That sounds like she knows who he is, and and you know these guys were here killing all of her guards. Like, is she a bad guy? Like, she is she on his side? I said we don't know that. So I guess I'm I'm confused. Um, so while still having him, uh, you know, hands tied behind his back so he can't get away. In fact, I'm gonna tie his ankles together too. Um, so I'm probably okay. still in the process of doing that. Um, but I'll look up at her, um, like kind of quizzically, um, and. I guess I'll just I'll just ask then. So you know this guy? The lady says, uh, "Yeah, I know him." And let me see. I'm just reading up on here. Make sure I get it all right and everything. So, sure. And then, actually, right after that, you guys, after the commotion had stopped, and then you. Uh, after the lady said something, you actually hear a door unlock, and you see the door pop open a little bit, and there is a, a very uh, well-dressed noble Oops. man standing spun around, sorry. behind the door, behind the door that uh, Erstel was trying to bash down when you guys first encountered him. So you're well, you're assuming this must be the person that he was after. But uh, yeah, a very nice dressed noble man opens up that door. So, cause, and then he uh, says, uh, "Dear, are you okay?" 
and she says, "Yeah, I'm okay." So, if you have a track G, we can't hear it. Oh, I clicked. Let me. Let me... Is it going now? Can you hear like a little bit of wind or something? Yeah. Okay. I think that was just a little bit too quiet and there wasn't much going on there. So. All right, then with the with the two of them kind of within earshot, then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say, well, this man was involved and directly responsible for the deaths of 11 people near our bar. So you know him? I'm, pardon me, I'm a little confused here that it seems like these guys came in and attacked and killed at least half your force. You know, the guards downstairs. There's at least eight dead. Not to mention the 11 that were killed outside of our bar. Is he not responsible for this? They say, uh, um, bar? Oh, uh, that, that explosion that happened in front of the bar. What was, I, I can't remember. Was that, was that yesterday or was that still the same day? I forget on my own. We haven't gone to sleep so. since, so it's still that morning. <laughs> like, or that morning is yeah. where it happened. We haven't gone to sleep afterwards. <clears throat> yeah, she's like, "Oh, uh, that explosion in front of that that new tavern over there." Oh, okay, um, in, in the Troll Skull Alley area. Yeah, um, I have no idea where that came from, but these guys, I do know why they're here. I, they were trying to kidnap my husband. So, and then the man, the nobleman, says, "Yeah, I think they were they were coming for me." So, he says, "My name is uh, Oren Growlhund. I'm the." you know the owner of this place and and uh the lady over there is my wife and hang on let me find her name yala he says that's my wife yala over there we own this house and and the uh, half work is for Abbas. that's uh her uh her, her boss sorry that's hard to pronounce and that's uh her personal guard so we have That's the man and the lady of the house and the guard. So, oh, sorry, the guard's talking, the wounded guard. I didn't mean to have the wounded guard talk. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just reading up on here, so give me one second, guys. But, yeah, that's what uh, that's what the man says, that they were here for him for sure. So, Well, that it must be because that's uh, he was saying his name and coming after trying to bang that door down so that's why he locked himself in there so let me see the track is completely silent again all right there you go okay i decided to turn it up even more maybe it's just <clears throat> i don't know there should be other stuff besides that wind but yeah let's see it already stopped again. It almost sounds like it's just one, like, three-second clip. Yeah, I don't... Let me go find some other random one just so we have some... No problem. There. We'll pretend it's a quiet summer day. And... Yeah, with this one, he's just so relieved. You don't even have to really try to convince him for information. He's happy that somebody saved his ass because he definitely seems scared. And he does have a rapier in his hand, but you can tell he is not combat, you know, trained at all. So, and he tells you guys that, uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, he says, well, um, Yala, my wife over there, she was really irritated with the with the Zentrums and because uh, we, you know, have been using them to, to help us, which I'm sure you probably might have figured out by now. We've been hiring them to help us, but uh, we wanted them to get the Stone of Galore for us. I'm sure you've heard of the heard of that before, and they've been in the process of trying to get it for us, but they're not they're not very good at it. So she decided that uh, she would go around the Zents, and she gave a necklace of fireballs to this really weird puppet-looking thing. Uh, and told that to use, you know, the fireballs if needed to go, to go get the stone of galore for us. Uh, that uh, that little gnome, what was his name? Dalek, Dal Dalekar. He had it. And the little puppet thing ended up killing more of the Xenorims we hired in the process than uh, he was supposed to. So he didn't do very well either. But uh, yeah. So. Hmm. All right. Well. Uh... 
I think I'm going to look over my shoulder because I'm still kind of, you know, making sure that uh, that the Earth still here is tied up. Uh, that that answer means that these two without I, I can't say this, of course, verbally out loud because Eldor, you know, I, I need Eldor and Akasha to know this, but not these two, which there's no way to do that. Uh, that means that these two are responsible for it. So, the, you know, the, the explosion was her fault. And they, they might have all been just trying to steal the thing, but these, it's still these guys' fault. These, these guys were the, essentially the mastermind so far, um, which means that, you know, we we'll, may have to kill that half-orc guard. <laughs> I guess out of... <laughs> this will be a somewhat meta, uh, because, you know, we, we, we still you know, the four guards that are left plus the bodyguard, the half-orc, and we're, like, pretty spent on resources. Um, you know what? I think what we do instead is maybe we play, well shit okay so we can't discuss this but I think I think me personally at least what Rob is going to do I'm going to play dumb that I haven't realized what just happened or what what he just said because he gave some very important information away that I don't know if he would have intended to so I say or at least what I'm going to do is I'm going to play dumb until the city watch get here and then I'm going to tell the city watch that these two are the ones that are responsible okay I mean just from the uh this guy is just spilling his guts because he's just so damn relieved to be saved. And he doesn't know that you guys know a nimble right had anything to do with anything of your explosion in front of your tavern. Yeah. So, like, he, he doesn't know that he's, like, giving you guys precious information. He's just spilling his fucking guts. So, again, you guys have to decide, you know, from what he tells you and stuff. But, yeah, so you guys can treat it however you want to. But by now, I mean, however long it's been, it's been at least... You know, because walking through there and everything, too, what, 10 to 10, 15 minutes you guys have been in this house? Or would it have not been that long, G? Because there was time in between combat, too. This fight, this fight alone? Wall. Yeah, well, oh, well, since we were outside. Because the were here before you guys make a noise, so. Yeah, since we were outside, it's probably been five minutes, five or six minutes. Uh, this fight alone was 30 seconds, and then we've been talking for, like, two to three minutes after that. So it's probably been, like, 10, 12 minutes. Probably okay. plenty of time for, for City Watch to show up. Yeah, so, you know, by now they have definitely have to have had word by this because, you know, a, a lot of ruckus like that, overly loud ruckus in a noble, you know, in a high-class neighborhood is definitely going to draw attention. So you'd assume the guards are probably on their way. But still, the Orin is still talking, and he actually tells you um, the Stone of Galore is actually, uh, it's not even a regular item. It, it was a living creature, a really ancient creature that got turned into an item, and it knows the location of a lot of money. Um, we're talking like a... A half a million gold pieces and that's why obviously we're after it i mean i guess that seems pretty obvious who doesn't want who doesn't want that much money you know and uh we've actually been uh, using the money that, that's why we wanted more too been using the money we've, we've been financially supporting the black network here in Waterdeep, and uh you know we were the ones that actually got rainier kidnapped because we knew that he had uh, information him or him or his dad had information about the uh, about the stone so so basically he's he's completely like irate is what it is so he's like spilling his guts still like just emotional outburst spewing shit so you know he's not like calmly telling you this and stopping in between i know i didn't narrate that very well but he's just fucking spilling his guts because he doesn't want to you know be killed or whatever for this you just assume and stuff <laughs> he doesn't know if you guys are city watch or what but he's just fucking letting it all out so what is what is the lady doing what is y'all doing is she just like i guess what is her reaction to him saying all of this she roll an insight check if you guys are going to look at her whoever looks at her during this process uh, no but i'm sneaking up behind ghost and while they're all distracted having this conversation he's grabbing ursel and slowly just kind of dragging him back towards the stairs <laughs> okay that's funny all right uh, when you look over at the lady, you look like she she's not doing anything like out of the ordinary. But when you do look at her, she kind of has this look on her face like, shut the goddamn hell up. So like her eyes kind of look like they're a bit wide. You know, she's trying her absolute best to not make it look like they are. But her eyes are definitely a bit wide. But she's not running over and throwing her hand, you know, over his mouth. And she's not trying to make a distraction or anything. She's just kind of standing there, you know, behind her with her guard right behind her. So. so she's the mastermind, and Orond here is just her dumb husband, it sounds like, who knew too much because he spilled... Like, we don't, we don't... We've never even heard of the Black Network, but, you know, finding out that these guys are 
you know, one employing the Zents, uh, you know, using that to try to steal the, the stone. They were responsible for, for at least the explosion, as well as, you know, the Zents. Apparently there's some infighting. Maybe they pissed off the Zents or something like that. But, uh, you know, the Zents came in after... Uh, maybe Erstel figured out that that Yala blew him up and his guards, and that's what he pissed him off, so he's coming and attacking them for it. Or maybe they... No, because he had the stone. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to ask them then, where's the stone now? I'm asking him. I'm, I'm still kind of, you know, looking at her occasionally too, but I'm asking him specifically because I know he'll spill it. He says, I, I have no idea where the stone is. The Yala had it last. I, I don't know where the damn thing is, and I'm, I'm just tired of it all. I'm ready to wash my hands of all of this. I don't, I don't care if I go to jail. Um, then in that case, I'm going to look over at uh, Akasha um, and... Without, I'm trying to be careful about how you know saying these things verbally, but with Ghost pulling Erstel's body away, that's what we need. We need to keep him alive, and we need to get him away from these guys. And because the thing is, if the City Watch show up and take him, then we won't be able to find out where the stone is. So if our goal is to find the stone, we need him alive and away from here. So I, that's not something I can exactly you know <laughs> explain with a look, uh, but I'll just look down, I guess, at, at Ghost dragging Erstel's body, and then just look back up at Akasha and nod. Yeah, well, I figured if he started attacking him, he may not have had a chance to give him the stone, so Ghost was taking him. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, I don't know that we'll be able to get him out of here. Maybe we can... Well, shit. Uh, I guess, it, you know, if I if I run a distraction with the City Watch when they show up as much as I can, just trying to keep their attention, uh, if Akasha and Ghost can sneak away with Erstel's body somehow, maybe, you know, get him uh, maybe out to the guardhouse or something like that where we can question him. I don't know. But is that, uh, is Erstel, uh he's conscious, right, or is he unconscious, just alive? He's unconscious when and he's stable. stabilized after that. Yeah. So okay. if we if we basically heal him one HP, then he's conscious and, and tied up. He's basically hog tied. Okay. So he's tied and Ghost is gently dragging him out, so you don't whack his head and take that last HP off or whatever and kill him. And so drag him down the stairs. Like, <laughs> exactly. He whacks his head every stair and dies. <laughs> he's fucking dead. So and uh, so okay. So you guys are kind of slowly moving her stole away and uh she the lady um or actually first yeah actually you can from where you're at um go ahead and give me a percentage check g and actually old or two jesus i can't roll anything above a five i had a natural one on my insight roll <clears throat> when you uh, you you don't see much, Holmes, because you're you're you know busy making watching her still get drugged across the floor, making sure nobody tries to make any moves. Because you know you're kind of a little on edge now. You're making sure none of those guards try to advance on you guys or anything, which they're not, you know. But you're just making sure. But Eldor looks over behind the nobleman standing in the door over there, and he looks and sees in the corner. He sees there's a a bird cage in the, the room where um. Uh, Orand was that he was locked that he locked himself in. Uh, you see a birdcage back there, and there's uh, three winged snakes, like not pictures, but actually this time, winged snakes in a cage back there. Uh, and you do see on this uh, little nightstand, or not a nightstand, but a little you know stand kind of thing next to where the cage is. You see a uh, uh, a little notepad with a quill pen. Well, not a notepad, but you know parchment or whatever the hell it would be. The quill pen sitting there. Uh, and then also when you look in, kind of in the corner, um, well, actually more like in the northeast corner of the room, close to that, you see a circle on the floor that has a bunch of runes on it. Oh, the blue map on the, okay, is it a teleportation circle? The blue, the blue circle there. So, I mean, I'm I don't gonna... know if any of the three of you guys oh, would be, from, I don't know if any of the three of you guys would be familiar with a teleportation circle, but meta knowledge, yes, that's what it is. But in game, I don't know if any of the three of you guys would know what that is. I don't, you know, not really sure if you guys worked close with mages or anything before, but out of game, yes, it's a teleportation, teleportation circle. Elders are the one that saw all that, though, right? Yeah, you didn't notice it, G, because you were distracted, keeping an eye on the guards out of the corner of your eye. Eldor wouldn't know what that is either, right? I, I mean, for the most part, clerics aren't going to really work around teleportation circles, right, G? That's more like wizards. 
usually... depends on depends on how common they are. I mean, if, if this is your you know your setting for it, and that's really going to be the deciding factors if they're common enough that people would recognize what they are. So, I mean, they are they are you know exactly that. So they would be used by people outside of just mage circles, but uh, meaning you know not just mages use them. Uh, but how common are they is the question. Okay. <clears throat> so I mean, I I'm guessing that um, it, at least you'd have possibly somewhat of an idea so what like maybe roll an arcana check to see if how much you actually understand or not kind of thing maybe yeah arcana check sure? would probably be yeah arcana check would be maybe for whether you'd recognize what it is or not can you give me a check? yeah i think that's good enough yeah. you, you do have you know magical capabilities and stuff so you look over there and uh you're pretty sure that that uh, teleportation circle so you're guessing that this must be the uh communications room so all right, I'm gonna just kind of. So. I'm gonna s kind of slow, uh, quietly tell Rav kind of what I see in that back room. Uh, if he if he doesn't have a good view of it, I can see it. Okay. Um. All right. Then I guess with that knowledge, I guess we'll just ask Orond, uh, uh, what is the purpose then of these? I mean, if you've got notes back here and flying snakes, I mean, are are you guys a part of those interims yourself? Uh, give me one second. AFK, I'll be right back, guys. Sorry. Right. Out of narrative for a second. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. I guess where we go from here with it. If we, if we can get uh, Erstal out of here, we could find out potentially what he did with the stone because he stole it off of the off of the corpse last we knew, right? That's the last location of the stone that we're aware of. We can figure out the well, teleportation no. thing. The... Teleport him. Yeah, but the husband said the wife had it last. Maybe he brought it here and gave it to her? <coughs> I, I, I don't know. I heard him mention giving, or that she uh, gave the stone of fireballs to the to the nimble right, and the nimble right blew it up trying to recover the stone. But uh, Erstal grabbed the stone off of the off of uh, Dalakar and then ran with it, unless he brought it to her. Which, I mean, I suppose he could have, but I don't know why they'd be fighting then if that's what they hired him to do, was to get the stone and bring it in. No, no, we also haven't seen the number right yet, and the detector thing went off outside the house, so... Oh, shit, yeah. So he's supposed to be here somewhere. Uh, hmm. shit. Um, I wonder if that's it. Maybe she had the, the stone and gave it to the nimble right. And he's around here somewhere. Like maybe he's in that room that you're you're standing by. Could be. Okay. Sorry. What was that question, G? Are they are they part of the Xenorims? Well, two things. First, is Eldor's uh, uh, umbrella beacon going off still? Not anymore. It went off when you guys uh, got close to the wall, and then it went off when you guys were in the yard still, like during the confrontation with the man and the dogs, and then uh, it's pretty much it. It hasn't gone off in a little while, but it did when you guys first got here. I can get a straight answer out of them, I mean, meaning that they wouldn't be able to lie, but... With them, ha with her having, she's the one that we would need to ask this question of, and with her having five guards behind her, we'd probably have to incapacitate them first. That the sound is is gone again, G. Yeah, is it just not looping or something? I must be lagging because you're kind of cutting out too. So maybe that's why the sound's gone. Well, that's what happened last week. Is, is I can hear lagging it. too much from it. I can't. Do you guys yeah, hear? I, I can, can hear. It's kind of choppy on your though. side. I'm not hearing anything at it's all. Like literally. Coming, okay, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's not hurting it anything. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess then. Yeah. Our, well, these guys at least hired this interim is how he described it. But that they have, you know, winged snakes here in their house. That's the symbol of this interim. I guess you know what I'm. I'm going to ask again, and this time I'm going to be staring at her where where the stone is now. So you're asking her directly? Yep. She says, uh, I, I can't tell you exactly where it is, but it's gone. I gave it to the, I gave it to the Nimble Right, told it to get it the hell out of here. Yeah, Becky guessed it. 
All right. Well, while they're distracted, I'm going to try and unlock this door again. Okay. Uh, slide of hand, please. Or just a dex check. I think you're same modifier, right? So. I'm proficient in slide of hand. So. Okay. That one actually gets it for sure. So let me go back and look at what that one is. So you go, and this time the tumbler turns and it unlatches when you start digging in there. And that one is 14. Look, look. All right, you open up the door, and it's actually, let me reveal it, uh, actually has a pretty large room. And it is, I guess it doesn't have any icons or anything in there, but it's a ballroom. So you look in there and there's mirrors all along the wall. Uh, there's some chandeliers, really nice. Well, they faux nice, I guess you can say, when you look a little bit closer. Uh, crystal chandeliers dangling from the ceiling. Um, and then the floor is a pretty nice looking parbish smaller marble. And it's uh, nice and shiny. It looks like it was, you know, it keeps kept up very well there's a fireplace over there with a stag's you know mounted head up over the fireplace and then uh the, the best thing though is uh hanging from the ceiling is a mural and you see a bunch of uh people fornicating and it's more than two there's like numerous people fornicating together in the staff <laughs> so so there are a bunch of eyes wide shut. all right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's literally what it says in the thing. I'm not lying to you. I didn't make that up. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, nothing else in the room? No other doors or anything? No, there's no other ways in or out or anything. Just, you know, some, uh, you know, windows and stuff. But no other doors and nothing seems to stand out. Right, Ballroom. So quietly close the door back up. Turn back around. Let's <laughs> pretend you didn't see any of that. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. Um... I guess uh, out of narrative, I don't know what else to do with these guys because basically we need, she has actual answers, but we're going to have to kill at least four guards and then the half-orc bodyguard to be able to get them out of her potentially because uh, she's she's obviously lying. She's not she's not going to tell us the truth. She did say that, that uh, you know, she gave it to the nimble right and he ran off with it, but, you know, as far as where he's going or anything, she's not going to give us answers <clears throat> because she wants to keep the stone, of course. But she is responsible for the, all of the deaths that have that occurred since this morning. Um, even, technically, even the Zenorum even attacking her guard, she's technically responsible for that as well because she sounds like she betrayed them or something. We don't exactly know, but anyways, <clears throat> he's capable of giving answers. But, you know, the guards aren't going to let us take her husband. Uh, did, where, where's Ghost gotten with Erstal? And did they react at all to taking him? Wouldn't you guys get him out of her line of sight, basically? Like when Ghost is, you know, about getting ready to go down the stairs, because he's going backwards, of course, pulling him. She says, that idiot's not going to talk. He doesn't know anything anyway. And then I she can, just I can make stop. sure he talks. So, okay, then I guess this is clearly a hostile situation, even if they're pretending that it isn't. Uh, I know that it is anyways. So if he's a, if he's basically not being disturbed, uh, I mean, Akasha can talk to him. Like, is there any way to, to give him instructions on where to take Herstal's body? And even where is a good idea to even do that? Um, I mean, dragging him through the streets won't work. You know? <laughs> A tied no, up bloody but... guy with a lion just dragging him down the street. <laughs> no, but I can take him to tell him to take him where he found um, where he found Eldor, which would be the stables. That's probably a good idea. If we can okay. if we can stay undisturbed for for you know a few minutes at least, then I can make sure that he tells us whatever he knows. It's just a matter of I mean, it's possible he doesn't actually know anything. Uh, but we still, the last we know for sure, because he could be lying, the, the husband could be lying, we don't know. But the last we know for sure, he picked a stone off of the uh, off of the body. Now, she says that she gave the stone to uh, the nimble right, which means that Erstal could have brought the stone here, gave it to her. She gave it to the nimble right, and the nimble right ran away, because we're not hearing it ping anymore. So the nimble right ran away with it, which means that, um, you know, if she, if she gave it instructions to take it somewhere, we just don't know where. But we could at least potentially, if we need to, get information out of Erstal first. I just don't know if he, you know, if it's worth doing. If he actually has any good information, or maybe we should just kill him. All right, it's up to you guys. Oh, and um, that room that the lady is in is a, a really nice bedroom with a fireplace and everything over there. It's, you're assuming it's the master bedroom. Um, you know, a nice little bathtub in the corner. Everything is pretty nice looking. Of course, it's the, you know, the nicest room uh, in the house. And you do see though that there is a. Uh, 
uh, what would they call it a foot locker yeah uh, near the edge of their nice big bed a nice wooden very nice foot locker that is locked there and that's it for the rest of the room and again just the orc main guard and then the four other guards none of any of them seem hostile they've all put their weapons away and everything they're just standing behind the lady of course she seems like a fucking bitch but so that's what you guys see looking in the room there so i just realized something too then if i mean okay uh the bed that's in there well i guess that probably for nobles it wouldn't necessarily matter do i get the impression that are they like a, a regular couple let's say do they sleep in that bed or is this his bedroom to the south because if that's not his bedroom then whose is it or, or this this communication room i guess not bedroom but uh communication room uh was like does er still because we we were told at one point that he lived here and then that he didn't remember um, like is he okay. stationed here is that like an office for him I'm curious if we should search that that room basically and just you know tell them to, to fuck off. Um, well, when you look over in the room, there's also a really nice mahogany standing up uh, wardrobe in there too, and the doors are slightly ajar, and you see men's and women's very nice clothing hanging on hangers inside there. And okay. you know there's and there is a picture of them two together, you know. Um, hanging up in the room as well too so you don't really know for sure but you also did hear the guard say when you were going through there before you guys opened that door to where Ursul was you did hear him say that that's the guest bedroom down there so oh okay all right so Ursul might be living here that might be his room i'm gonna push uh oron out of the way and i'm gonna search that that uh room You said there was a notepad in here. Like, is there like, is it empty or are there notes written on it? No, there's there's nothing on it. But when you look at the pad, um, again, that you don't even really need to roll for this one. When you look at the pad, you can see the imprint a little bit from the page above it being written on. So it's used for sure. And you see the there's three winged snakes in a cage. You know, again, and then there's that teleportation circle over there. So you would assume that uh those are like carrier pigeons would be your estimation so i'm going to take a piece of charcoal out and then lightly rub it over the page so that i can read what was written on the the paper above it okay let me take a look let me read for a second and see if i can actually if there's actually anything in here because i think there is still more okay. information so i'll see if i can mix that into right there if you roll a one it's going to be a dick butt <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> I rolled a couple of, like, I had one natural one a little bit ago, but I rolled some really awful rolls today, so it wouldn't be surprising. Every time I've done a skill check, the fight ones, most of the rolls were fine. I, did, I got a two with one of my spear attacks, so that sucks, but any, any skill checks have been pretty awful. When you uh, charcoal over it, actually, uh, I'm going to, so I'll change this, you don't actually see, well, there are some words, but you see... Um, drawings and it looks like somebody was drawing a map that's the last thing that was on there so there are some words but it's it's a map it, lo it looks like it was somebody trying to draw a map that's the last thing that was on there does it look familiar at all or like i guess is this a map like like streets or you know with houses and stuff like i guess is there any anything that i might be able to use to identify where it is or what it's when you look at it, it it's an urban map for sure it, uh, streets buildings that kind of stuff so does it and, look familiar and, and when to you, the streets that I know? Uh, when you look at it, it doesn't look like any specific area, but you would assume it's water deep because, you know, each town has their own way of, uh, you know, the, the way the streets are shaped, you know, and stuff like that, and like the, the kind of the grid, you know, kind of thing. So you can't tell where it is, but you're pretty sure it's uh, somewhere in water deep. So. Okay. It might be where she told him to take, she told the nimble right to take the stone. Or it could have been to tell him where our bar is basically to, to where you threw the fireball it could be either of those uh, i'm going to search the room though any anything in the drawer or stuff like that let me double check i think that was about it but let me double check though it's weird having no sound like i don't know that if, is, it, is it normally weird for you guys or is there like i guess is there ever places when you guys are playing that is it that it's quiet or like if I just have the volume down too low or something? I don't think it so. Is. No, I don't think so. 
it doesn't seem odd on my end right now, but I'm also concentrating on reading and stuff. So if I was not and that's... I was just waiting, then it would be kind of like, eh, it seems oddly quiet. Yeah, that's exactly what I was wondering is, is as the DM, no. you know, if you wouldn't notice it as much as the, as the players would. As the DM, you're you're on 100% of the time, whereas the players, like, kind of take turns, you know, being in the spotlight for a second, but the DM is permanently on the entire time. So it's something that, you know, I think as far as exactly that, that what Ben was saying, that, that uh, concentration-wise, it'd be easy to miss. In this room, nothing else stands out, G. Just the, uh, it's a bird cage with the, the three snakes in it, the notepad that you saw had a, what looks like a map drawn on it before, and then the teleportation circle. So, like, there doesn't, you don't even see, like, a, yeah, there's not even a bed or anything in here. So apparently this uh, was the guest suite, but, you know, was been modified. So um, Just since the paper's there anyways, and we're just waiting for City Watch as it is, I'm going to write down the sigils for the teleportation circle, like the specific order. So uh, teleportation circles, how it works is, um, in fact, I'll need to tell Fox this too, actually, because of where we're at in Embers. But um, uh, basically the, the runic symbols that are on the outside of it are what dictate where it connects to. So you basically okay. have a matching pair the other it's it, you it's they don't just go anywhere although they can you know but you need somebody to actually cast the spell and everything but anyways the the symbols that are around the outside of the ring are what decide where this one is connected to meaning that if we find the other side of it i'll be able to tell that this is this is where it connected back if that makes sense yeah even without having to use it you can find out what the yeah the two points are yeah so i'm just okay. gonna well, well, with the paper there i'm gonna jot down the you know the what's how this is represented Okay, then if you want to, what, just like add a note in your inventory or something that says the runic symbols or something, or just yeah, whatever or whatever, or, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not even yeah. something that would, you know, it's a kind of a more narrative thing, but I'll, I'll go ahead and put it in my inventory too, just as a reminder. Yeah, just in case it does pop up, but yeah, nothing else stands out in that room, so. Um, I'm going to ask her if the City Watch is actually coming, because shouldn't they have been here by now? The, she says they, they better be coming after all this trouble. I don't know what the hell, or got up Ursula's ass over here. But... Uh, we never searched him. Shit, we need to we need to check his pockets. How good is Ghost at looting? <laughs> <laughs> Start sniffing shit out. Um, pull it up. He's got great perception with his nose. <laughs> yeah. So. Maybe I mean if the, if the city watch are coming anyways, we need to check his pockets. Um, the others I'm not too concerned about checking the the regular zents because they probably don't have much beyond you know whatever a few coins or something, but. Uh, maybe Erstel has a you know a note or a key or something that might be useful. Are you guys still take? Are you guys still? There's Ghost. He's still in the process of getting, taking him out to the stable. Is that where the destination still is, or what? Yeah, I'm okay. assuming he's probably like what halfway down the stairs by now. Yeah, he's making a decent way, so he could actually be like inside the house still. But I'm just gonna you know say that you know he's on his way. So. But. All right. Well, then I'll just you know walk down the stairs and check while Ghost is pulling him. Okay. It's going to be an awfully interesting trail, though, because there will be just this massive blood trail of, you know, Ursula's bleeding wounds <laughs> as he's <laughs> dragging it down the stairs and then out the, out the front door, all that stuff. What, you don't like art? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty interesting art installation with all the dead bodies in this house. Yeah, oh, I, I didn't I, even notice. I was you... just going to say there's a VA. That was a VA for Ursula. I didn't even notice that, so sorry. So he was a little bashed up, but again, his wounds until you guys whooped his ass weren't like impeding him or anything. But he was wounded. So, so the how he's burned there is that from the fireball explosion that blew him up. You see how his face is all burned up and he's smoking. Yep. So I mean, you don't know for sure, but that would be a pretty decent guess because obviously that looks like a pretty fresh burn. So. Okay. Wonder how many chickens. You guys could ask him. <laughs> Uh, investigation? Yeah. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Let me double check. Let me double check here. And, okay. Uh, when you go... When you go to check him, um, babe, you don't see much else on him except for his weaponry. He has a short sword and a crossbow, and he has, you know, some armor, you know, some armor on and everything, which is slightly burned, but you actually don't see anything of note on him, so. Okay. Uh, since I'm heading down the stairs anyways, I'm just going to check out that front door and see if I see any guards coming. 
or City Watch. Okay, um, which door, Bib? The door that's down at the bottom of the stairs that we came in at first. Okay, the from so the outside, the the one that the one where the thug was that Rob found. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you're down there, and you don't uh, see anything, but you do hear footsteps coming. So, but you can't see anything, you know, because the wall and everything. But you do hear some footsteps coming. They're not right there yet, but there's definitely a few of them coming up the street in your direction because they're getting louder as they, you know, as you're waiting. So. All right, well then I'm going to make my way back upstairs and tell Ghost to take him through the kitchen. And just kind of wipe up some blood so it's not quite as obvious that a body was dragged through there. I don't know that we, I don't know that he's going to have any information we need. I'm not sure like where we can even follow up on this beyond using the detector to try to find the nimble right that she sent out. Because if she's telling the truth about that and, you know, we don't necessarily have any reason to believe that she is. And I suppose we could wake up Ursula and confirm that she that he did give it to her. Uh, and then if, if so, that she gave it to the Nimble Right, and the Nimble Right's just somewhere out in the city. Uh, but she's not going to tell us where it is unless we break in later, you know, either dispatch guards or break in and, you know, grab her, kidnap her or something like that, and then I can make her tell the truth. But either way, we're going to need to tell the guards because the guards are going to show up, so we need to... Uh, well, shit. <clears throat> if we tell the guards that she's the one responsible... Uh, she's noble. She may just buy her way out somewhere. But uh, you know, if we tell the what was the order of the watchful order of magistrates or something like that, uh, the detectives Barnabas, if we tell yeah. them that that her and her husband are the ones responsible, they may end up under arrest unless they you know or just because they're nobles they just buy their way out or something. But Erstel is a smaller cog. We thought he was a bigger cog when we got here, but he's he's obviously not mastermind at all. He was just hired. Yeah, it's up to you guys. So if you want to, you can take a minute to wake Arstel up and see if he'll talk before the guards get too close. <clears> it's your choice. Uh, and then if you want to wait for the guards, you can. But also, you don't know like what the hell they're going to think. So, I mean, it could go good, it could go bad. But either way, it's up to you guys. Because you guys know you didn't do anything wrong. But it doesn't necessarily mean the guards are going to believe you. So it's your guys' choice if you want to wait uh, to actually see them here on site or what, you know. Well, we can we can tie him to a chair and and wake him up and ask him and then just you know give him to the guards. I I, I would probably want to kill him, but if the guards are going to show up shortly anyways, I don't want to be, you know, mid murder <laughs> when they show up. Guards frown upon <clears throat> torture. Well, I don't know that we even need to torture him necessarily. I mean, I have a specific kind of a poison that's that's uh, for making him tell the truth. All right. So, um, where did you guys want to? stop him at to do that? It's your guys' choice. Probably so. in the stables. Okay. So... Alright, then we will say that you guys are all down in the stables. Let me take a look here. Alright, so you guys have him in the stables. Um, I guess if you wanted to, you could just tie him up to one of the little, you know, dividing wood, wood wall things in between where the horses stand or something, to where he doesn't... to where he can't get away. So. Those are usually slats. Yeah, that'd work perfect. Yeah, okay. So, you guys get him tied up, and you guys slap him in the face a couple times. Get him uh, awake. And where did I have him? Here he is. And he pops up, and he says, Oh, shit, I thought I was fucking dead. Why'd you guys, uh, why'd you guys even bother to bring me back up i figured you know just leave me there oh i don't i don't mind sending you on back if you're ready for that i just had a couple questions first to see if maybe you could save your own life yeah well i guess i don't have too much choice i, I don't know a whole lot but i mean i think i'm done uh, <clears throat> working for these assholes so i whatever what do you guys want to know where's the stone uh, that's what i came for came after the I came in there to try to get the stone, and, uh, you know, they didn't like that very much, so they sick their guards on me, and, of course, I brought some help with me because I knew I was going to need it, so that's what started that big fight there. Uh, and then I saw the lady give the stone to this weird-looking fucking puppet thing, like, man, puppet thing moved really weird, and it ran off, 
I didn't get a chance. I was tried to go after it, but I was stopped by the guards. So I have no idea what the hell that thing got off to. You didn't hear her say anything to it? She handed it a piece of paper and handed it that stone and told it to go. So the little map thing that I charcoaled out could be directions then that, uh, you know, she gave a piece of paper. It could have been what I took the map of. He says, uh, yeah, uh, more than likely it would have been uh, pictures instead of words. They, Some of the more intelligent ones can read, but they understand pictures better. So if I had to guess, I'd say it was a map, yeah. Well, uh, insight check to see if he's telling the truth or not. Because I don't know Go if I want, I don't want to waste my poison. It's expensive. <laughs> Go ahead and roll For a specific reason. So 19. Oh, yeah, sorry. It should have been tower anyway. Oh, yeah, but that's definitely good enough. From what you can tell, he's telling the truth. So, because, like, when he said he, uh, <clears throat> like, the insight will go for that, too, I guess. When he said he's done with these people with the Grawlhens, with the Lady and the Lord, then uh, he didn't seem like he was kidding. So, I don't think he's trying to, uh, you're, you're, you don't think he's trying to cover for them anymore. So, you're assuming that was the truth, what he said, that the fucking Nimble Right ran off with it. Well, while you're being so forthright um, and, you know, forthright with the information that we're asking here, uh, where does that teleportation circle go? What were the winged snakes for? He says, well, you know what? Again, I don't like them, even though this is a, well, no, I'd be dead either way. Fine, I'll say it. That teleportation circles goes to, man, they're going to kill me for this. It goes to Colot Towers. Do we know this place? Have we ever heard of that before? You know, I would have to double check. I think it's it's uh, the kind of thing that you you guys would uh, know, like see the tower and everything like that. But I'm not sure if it's uh, known that there's like mages in there or whatever you'd want to say. So like teleportation kind of stuff. Uh, I don't really know. So, but either way, though, you guys have heard of Colot Towers. It's, it's, it's you know towers in town. So I'm sure you know where Colot Towers is. Yes. So again, I don't know if you know any details about it, but. Or if you knew that I had any teleportation circles until now. But yes, you guys would know where that is. So, What was your work here with, with the Grawlhunds? Was it just they just hired you to find this stone? It seems like if you had an entire room set up, a teleportation circle built, this is a lot of expense. Not that recovering the stone wouldn't potentially cover that, but it seems like why would they give you an office, essentially, if you were just here for there. that? Well, this is the... Uh... The Grawl Huns are not the, the top tier of the chain. Not even close. And who is? Put it that way. Uh, mm. You're going to die anyways, whether it's by my hand or theirs, so... <clears throat> you could at least he buy says, yourself a, a, you know, a short while of freedom until they, they find you. He says, all right, and give me one second. I'm actually pulling that part up here. He says, just, just give me one second here. I guess I don't have any damn choice, man. This is going to get me so killed. So just let me look up the info here real quick, though. Okay. I'll untie his hand so we can flip through his <laughs> reference manual to find the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you guys have any questions for him, too? Out of out of narrative for a second? Um. There we go. Okay, sorry, guys. Didn't mean to cut you off there. He says, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a uh, the yeah okay he says uh it's a uh, the the master mention we've been we use the we've been using the towers to move in between Grawl Hunt and here uh moving guys in and out so who's the myself master? the master well I guess you'll all You'll probably find out soon enough anyway, Manchun. Do we know that name? Mm, no, I don't think you guys would actually recognize that name. It's the first time I heard it. Like, even being in the city, I don't think you guys would recognize that name. Okay. So, uh, so is, you don't know who that is. But... I'll ask him then, is, the, is, the, is Manchun the, the leader of this interim then? Pardon us, we're, we're new to the city. He says... Uh, no, no, the, the, the Zenorim are, they're a, 
just a, a different group, mostly, you know, cell swords. They've been pawns, mostly, you know, helping helping the Grawl Huns, helping the Black Network, just cell swords mostly. But uh, no, he's, he's not the leader of them. I and he could be if he wanted to, but he has bigger plans than to try to babysit a bunch of stupid street thugs. So. All right, I think this is my last question then. Who would, or I guess, where would uh, Yala be instructing the stone to be taken to <clears throat> he says that i i don't know because she they they didn't you know want me to have the stone i i was obviously going to collect it and they were going to grab it from me i wasn't even going to have a chance to keep it much so that i honestly i don't know because i was coming forward i got you know got got tired of uh, being jacked around so i was going to come take it myself it ran off or then i saw that stupid fucking puppet thing ran off with it and again i don't know where it went so i thought well i'm still gonna get a still gonna get mine so i was gonna take the take the lord for ransom and that's when you guys found me so she doesn't have like a safe house or a secondary residence he says not that i know of they don't keep me overly informed i'm uh not super high on the totem pole they only tell me as much as i need to know for just the situation actually I don't have anything else to ask. Eldor? I think you guys covered most of it. I mean, at this point, it's more about just a little bit of looking around. Well, what do you think? Do we leave him tied up here for the City Watch to find? Did you say that out loud? Yeah, I'm asking Eldor and uh, Akasha. I mean, got, we heard boots. We heard boots. So, I mean, they should be here anytime now, if not already, in the courtyard. Yeah, you actually hear boots moving past on that the the wall to your guys is uh, east. You definitely hear boots over there, and they've passed you a minute ago. So you're assuming they're going around to the gate. So because that's the yard, and obviously that side street goes up and then turns west, and then that's where the gate was that you guys came through. That you guys jumped over and Akash opened the gate. So and but he speaks up and says, uh, "I vote you let me go." <laughs> Out loud, I'll say if uh, you're no longer useful to us, we could just leave you here. Yeah, I vote we leave him for the guard, and he can just confirm that she's the reason that shit blew up in front of our tavern. That is true. So I guess then, okay, all right, that's smart. Uh, the next question then is: Are we going to tell the uh, uh, the city watch and the magistrates, Barnabas? Because if we're going to talk to them, we can just drag him back upstairs and you know use him to to confirm that. Uh, and kind of give all the information over, and then they can just do with it as they will. If they're not going to arrest her, I think I might just try to sneak in later and kill her. I agree. Yeah. All right, then if that's the case, then I guess we, you know, leaving him tied, but is, is he, I mean, he's conscious, and he can presumably walk now, so, you know, with his uh, uh, wrists tied behind his back, walk him up at, at Spear Point back up to where the, you know, upstairs, wherever the, where the City Watch are, basically. Uh, I guess, so the City Watcher here then, did Barnabas show up? Barnabas, and I can't remember the other guy's name. We didn't get the other guy's name. Okay. That's probably Actually, I didn't note it then. Maybe I forgot to give it to you guys, because it, it did name the other guy, so I'll, um, the next time you guys encounter them, I'll definitely give it to you. Or actually, I'll go back and look at it, we'll, and then tell you guys next time. But, uh, yeah, you guys did catch the other person's name, too. So, <clears> the <throat> magistrate guys, yeah, they're the ones that were doing the investigation. You know, because it was arcane nature, they figured out outside the explosion outside the tavern. So, so does do the two of them, or, or at least you know one of them anyway, show up? Let me see. Actually, I mean, right about that time, of course, then the gate opens because it was still open. I don't think you guys locked it again, and you guys do see uh, about twenty guards with some sergeants with them too. They they definitely knew that this was a serious one. So, there is a, a large amount of pretty elite guards coming your guys' way through the gate, and you guys look and do see your friend Barnabas, and it'll have the other guy's name here in a second, let me find it. And you you do still see the same two fellers that you saw at the fireball explosion. Barnabas and yeah, I forgot to get the other guy's name. Uh, Saith. I'll spell it out. Uh, Cromley. Okay. There we go. And 
and that was your guys is uh, the guy that you met and talked to before Barnabas. And yes, they are with the uh, massive guard patrol. And they are coming through. Now you guys are still in the stable, so they don't see you yet. But um, well, actually, I mean, well, we okay, you guys hear them a lot of footsteps. Yeah, we. I, oh, okay, I was, so was going to be marching out with, uh, with, uh, or still, you know, still tied okay. up. All right, then when you come by the guards, say, "Whoa, halt, halt! Who are you guys? What the hell is going on here?" Uh, we were just in the neighborhood and heard some fighting going on. Figured we'd help, so we came in and. Uh, uh, saw a lot of the, these it appeared to be Zentrum. Uh, you know, you know that they would of course know that the gang, but uh, uh, Zentrum attacking these these folks here, um, and we found this one who appeared to be their leader. I'm saying that to the guards, not to if Barnabas is asking, I'll tell him the truth, but not the regular guards. Yeah, the that was you know the the sergeant or you know uh, captain or whatever in charge uh, is the one that said that out loud. So you say that, and he says, "What the hell are the Zentrum doing?" attacking here they're that's just in broad daylight man i don't know what the hell they're doing and then he sees erstal and he's like eh, we recognize you i'm assuming you probably know what the hell's going on here and Erstel I'm, says, gonna, uh, I'm gonna interrupt uh, him and and uh say are the are any representatives from the watchful order of Magis protectors here any of them come with you he says uh yeah by chance and he turns around and, you know, they're coming through the gate now. Barnabas and Seth are coming through. It says, Barnabas, the, these folks were asking about you. So, because, I mean, you know, he he's the guy from there. I know you didn't say his name, but so Barnabas and Seth come over. And they're like, ah, oh, hey, nice to see you guys again. Right, I'm going to ignore the guard and walk or still over to Barnabas and Seth. Okay, and say what? I'm sorry. I'm just ignoring the guard and taking him over to them. Um... Well, we, we did, uh, as you suggested, and, and uh, track down what caused the explosion this morning. Uh, and I'll just kind of reiterate all of it, that um, uh, Yala Graalhund uh, gave her um, gave a, a necklace to her uh, nimble right, who threw that down there, caused the fireball, killed all those people. Uh, Erstel here stole a, st a valuable artifact, and he does, he's actually the one that told us about the stone, I think, anyway. So stole the stone off of uh, the, the gnome that had carried it that was trying to bring it to us. Uh, Erstal then, we don't know the series of events exactly, but presumably brought it back here to give to her. She then gave it to her nimble right again. The nimble right has run off with the stone. We don't know where it is. But that's the series of events, meaning Yala was responsible indirectly, but responsible for the explosion as well as all the deaths here in the house. Uh, you're going to find uh, 10 bodies in there. No, 11, because there were eight on the floor in the downstairs and then uh, the ones upstairs. So some sent some some of their you know the Gralhund's guards, and then Erstel here, who we kept alive so that he can confirm the story for you. But again, Yala is responsible, so she's the one that should be both her and her husband should be uh, taken under into custody as well. Barnabas sits there. He doesn't even. He still he looks perplexed the entire time. In a good five to ten seconds after you say that, the first thing he says is, "The stone of Galore, huh? Wow." So like you know all the bodies and everything that's the one thing that he you know just the the one thing that he's uh thinking about and he says wow uh such a such a magical artifact uh, that's great um and then uh he says I, I wonder what they would want to do with it and and the lady a noble lady getting interfered with all this that must be something valuable uh do you do you guys know what it's for and he's looking over at all you guys. A nurse will do. So, well, he asked, you know, why the lady would want it, why, why the Grawlhun, Grawlhuns would, you know, go through so much trouble to, to do all that. So, do you guys want to answer? Or yeah, not I think, well, so. I think I'd probably be honest, anyways, and just tell him, yeah, that it's it's a key to uh, an immense amount of stored wealth that was apparently stolen at one place, and and. Uh, uh, at least Yala here wanted the money. We don't necessarily know what her you know, reasoning for it was, but uh, she and her husband not only hired but worked directly with the Zenorim, uh, including even having a uh, teleportation circle that directly connects this mansion to uh, Colat Towers um, and were apparently either working directly for or at least reporting to Manshun. So presumably could be trying to get the stone to try to, to give him the money. We don't know. 
Uh, but it, it, essentially the, the stone itself is a key to recovering a lot of money. Barnum says, well, that makes sense. It's always about the almighty dollar, isn't it? Well, almighty gold piece. <laughs> and then he says, uh, but that's that's odd, though. A teleportation circle, it's... You wouldn't really think of uh, what would the Grawlhens have a teleportation circle for, you know? I mean, they don't seem to know anything about the arcane arts that I know about. And uh, Erstel peeps up and says, uh, I know something. They're, they're, uh, they're a little different than you think they are. You know, that footlocker in, in their bedroom, that one has uh, some robes in there. Uh, I've never seen where they go or exactly what they do. But, uh, yeah, I've seen some uh, religious artifacts and some robes and... Um, doesn't look like it's your friendly religions, if you know what I'm talking about. Looks more like your, uh, you know, scary demon kind of religion thing. I, I don't really follow it much myself, but like a cult? They're, they're, they're odd. They're they're, they're uh, not exactly what you think they are. <laughs> they're a little different. And Barnabas says, oh, "What the a cult and teleportation circles and lots of well, wow, this is a lot to comprehend." And he kind of just gets quiet, you know, thinking for a second, him and. And Saith is over there, and he, you know, and he's, I'm assuming he was, you know, obviously part of the conversation, and he was talking to you guys too about that stuff. Uh, and then you guys, every, every once in a while, um, a couple of words are missed. Oh, you totally got the overall, but a couple of words are missed because there's actually two Griffin Riders circling above in the air. They're not landing, but the circling the neighborhood and over there. Yep. The, the police birds are up in the sky. So, so they are circling around, looking around too. Well, I mean, that's all the information we have, at least at this point. So, I mean, we're probably going to, you know, unless you guys, anything, unless there's anything you guys want to do, Akasha and Eldor, we'll probably head back and just turn over Erstel to, to the authorities here. I'm good. All right. So, we guys told them about what you know and everything. So, um, are you guys just going to head out and you know, get back to the tavern and go check on everything, or did you want to do anything else? That was, I mean, it seems like we've at least tied up this bow as best we can. I mean, we don't know where the stone is, so, I mean, the next step, if we're going to try to track down the stone ourselves, would be to kind of go around the city and see if we can get the, the ping to go off to try to find Plus, a nimble ride, but we don't even know if it's yeah, I mean, potentially, if these two are not taken into, if the, the Grawlhunds are not taken into custody, we could always try to sneak back in here later and, you know, uh, inflict justice as needed, I guess, if, if that's uh, important enough to you guys to do that. But uh, Spin the wheel of karma. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm curious about what that cultist, uh, it sounds like a cult, you know, it sounds like they're in a, like a, uh, uh, eyes wide shut kind of a cult right because we saw that ballroom thing with the stuff that's up there and then they're you know they're not who they pretend to be etc so <clears throat> but I don't know that that would be part of the you know if if, the, if that's part of the actual adventure or just us kind of screwing around having fun and that would force Ben to improv which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just you know that's harder to do for a new DM so no I don't care Yeah, you guys do that we'll get something figured out so uh, uh, time wise though you... go ahead G oh I was going to say um when you guys are getting ready to leave, the captain uh, looks over at Erstel and says, because, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys told the story about how Erstel was in there trying to kick the door down to get to what's-his-face and everything, and he actually came in and attacked everybody. So the captain's like, uh, you know, uh, attempted murder on a noble is uh, could get you your death sentence. You know that, right? And Erstel's like, eh, I'm a dead man anyway. I don't give a shit. And he's just not even resisting arrest, letting him take him out. So, um, I guess then... As we're about to leave, then I'll ask Barnabas and uh, and say then. Uh, so, do you intend to take Yala and Orond into custody as well? Everyone here is a suspect, essentially. I just, I've I've seen you guys here. We've questioned you guys. The captain was here because the question, you know, the, the captain was talking to you guys too as well. It was mostly Barnabas and Seth, but the captain was there and Erstel was there and said the story and everything. So you guys are not. You were suspects at first, but they had a chance to question you right there. So you guys are not suspects, but uh, unless something changes, but everybody else in this entire fucking place is, because they still don't even know. You told them what's going on, but they still haven't even had a chance to fully investigate yet. So he says, uh, until further notice, uh, the Lord and Lady are going to have to be questioned too. I mean, they were attacked on their own home grounds, but uh, you never know what could be going on. And uh, if your story's true, maybe they're not as innocent as they seem. So yes, they will be 
that will be questioned right? for for sure all right well let me if we're needed we'll be you know where to find us we're back at our bar it says thank you again for the information you guys seem to be uh, a lot of help to me so thank you yeah don't forget <clears throat> to check that ballroom upstairs it's weird <laughs> <laughs> he says uh, okay sure um, I don't I don't dance much but uh We'll make sure we check the entire place. It's kind of our job. Yeah, it doesn't so, look like yeah. he knows anything was going on in there. Yeah, he doesn't get it for making a joke. He's like, you know, too serious of a person. He he doesn't catch the joke. But so he says, "Oh yeah, we'll, we'll thoroughly investigate everything. We always do." So. All right. Well, I guess we if there's anything else we need to do, we can. But otherwise, we can head back to the bar, um, and you know, kind of settle in. I suppose that then out of narrative. Then um, is there. Like, is that the end of the chapter? No, there actually is a little bit more, but it would continue on when you guys have decided, you know, what you're doing from here. So, you know, it's like in the days following kind of thing that it continues on. So if there's anything else you guys wanted to do before you head back, then by all means. And if not, then we will carry on. Yeah, let's go ahead and carry on because we've got 20 minutes left. And I was just, you know, if we're going to if we're going to level, we could do it. But otherwise, if we're, you know, if we're not at the end of the chapter, then let's finish the chapter so that we can do that next week or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So probably, well, if you guys know what you want to do, we might have time to level. I'm not sure how long it'll take, but there's not too much left in this, though. So we can finish this for <clears> sure, <throat> finish the chapter today. And if we have enough extra minutes, if you guys want to, we can do your levels. And if not, we'll start the next session with that. So cool. it's up to you guys. So. All right. So um, when you guys are back, you guys get back to business and, you know, go in and check on Woody and uh, Sancho and everybody and everything's uh, pretty standard. But, in, you know, in the next few days, you have people coming in and out and they're obviously heard about what happened they've been referring to the incident at the Grawlhun Villa it's now known as the Grawlhun Villa bloodbath so it's a, kind of like a famous event now and everybody's been talking about it and um, you know you have people that you know eyes and ears kind of thing you have, have friends going in and out and they've been hearing about uh, the city watch has actually really been putting a real hurting on the uh, black network and the Zents so they're finally getting serious about it in the, the days after the Growlhun Villa bloodbath because apparently it becomes you know serious when you mess with rich white people. So let me see. And um, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you guys came across that name or not, but you know, there's been uh, even some bigger named people uh, from the Xenorims and, and the well, you don't know much about the Black Network, but stuff like that names that they've been questioned about. And now, ever since then, the uh, it seems like the black net black network is starting to lose favor with people because they've been, you know, everybody hears about what's been happening, so they're kind of starting to fall apart, even though they don't really want to. So, and give me one just second, or give me just one second here. Okay, and so in the days leading up, you guys see that, and you know, you guys, your friends are coming in out and. You know, uh, one of your guys' friends, of course, is Big Jerry and Little Jerry. And you guys are standing there one day just, you know, just uh, checking out your bar and everything. And uh, when the door opens, you see something flying through the door. And it lands over by a table. And Little Jerry instantly gets up and starts, like, flock, you know, kind of like half chicken flying. And, like, gawking and squawking and everything and going over towards what just flew in and landed on one of the tables. You guys going to go check it out? And yeah. Big Jerry stands up like, what the hell is that thing? And he's, he looks like all freaked out. Like he's, you know, like if he had a dress on, he'd be like on a stool holding his dress up and like dancing <laughs> up and down. You know, like he saw a rat kind of thing. What is so, it? So you guys head over there and you see, which you've seen, we saw one a few days ago, uh, one of those flying wing snakes. And it has a, uh, a note written on it. I'm tied to it. Looks like the, we got some mail folks. Your mail. <laughs> oh, and, um, priority. and little Jerry is still trying his best. Is somebody going to try to hold little Jerry back so he doesn't eat your messenger? Yeah, I'll push the chicken out of the way and grab the letter. Okay. And the snake is like hissing at it and stuff. So you guys, somebody picks little Jerry up and hands him to big Jerry. And he's like, man, I hate snakes, man. I hate snakes. Why do you think I have a bird for a best friend? You know, he keeps him away. So, and you guys open it up and look at the notice written in common. And it says, I would like to know more about what happened to Grawlhun Villa. If you can spare the time, meet me at 
Agaran's, hang on, I'll spell that out, sorry, Agaran's statue in the City of the Dead at High Sun tomorrow. You'll be paid generously for your time and trouble, and is signed Istrid Horn. The City Istrid. of the Dead is the uh, cemetery area. Hang on, we've heard that name. Uh, let me check my notes real quick. Uh, Eldor found a letter regarding a loan from Istrid Horn to Emic, so the, the competitor guy. Uh, she loaned him 150 gold. Ah, oh, that's where that name was. I knew I heard that one. <laughs> uh, she wanted to meet us, City of the Dead, the graveyard. Yep. <clears throat> was that today or tomorrow at uh, High Sun? High Sun tomorrow. And yeah, high sun tomorrow signed Istrid Horn. Well, sounds like we've got a meeting. All right, guys. So you're going to just uh, continue on and then go meet her the next day. Anything else first? Um. Yeah. I mean, in this, in the sake of time, yeah, for me at least, so that we can wrap this chapter up first. Yeah. Okay. All right, and uh, uh, we're going to be well rested, I assume, for the next day. Yeah, we can take a long. Oh rest. yeah, yeah. Actually, I need to apply that for you guys. Yes. So, but uh, there we go. But um, so you guys get to the cemetery at High Sun, and uh, when you guys get out there, it's a nice day outside, and you see people. Um, you know, out in the park area next to you, all the grass and everything, and there's people picnicking and, you know, out there throwing frisbees and stuff like that. Probably doing frolf, you know, like frisbee golf. So, a bunch of really cool guys from back in the 90s doing that. And then you guys do see a... A... Uh, actually, oh, there we go. A, uh, a short little, uh, you would assume, dwarven woman uh, approach you guys. And she says, hello, uh, my name is Istrid, and uh, obviously I know who you guys are, of course. Um, and I actually came here, or I, I brought you guys here, uh, hoping that I could actually get uh, some help from you guys. I, uh, to make story short, I kind of need, I need, I need to hide out. The City Watch is after me. Can you guys hide me? I'll pay you. A lot. You, based on your means of communication, clearly are, are working with the Zents. Why don't they hide you? Why would you be coming to us? We're not particularly fond of them. I will have to wreck on that one later, so that way I don't sit here and wait forever reading through that. Because it didn't say anything about that part, but, uh, I mean, the, the winged snake, yeah. So I guess that well, would make it seem like that. But I don't know if she actually is or not working for them. I, again, that's what I have to look up. So. Okay, okay, I gotcha. I honestly don't know. So I don't, I don't want to have to make you guys wait, so I will wreck on that one for you guys later. But uh, so, but for now, she says, I mean, whether she's lying or not, she says, I don't work with the Zens. What are you talking about? I just, the city guard just doesn't like me. I, 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 I can tell you about it later. Just I just need some a place to crash. I really do. So, right, and then... I know apparently the city watch doesn't, they seem to think you guys are, you know, nice or whatever. They don't think you're criminal. So I don't think they're going to be poking their nose around your guys' tavern. Then I'm gonna I'm I'm making an insight check here. Um, so basically, because I'm, I'm suspicious of her or whether she's actually working with the Zens or not. So once you know for sure, then you can fill that in of whether or not I believed her. Okay. <clears throat> do you want to go ahead and do you want to just do the roll next time, or do you want to just do it now? I'll, I'll write do it down. Now. I'll do it now. Okay. Um. I. Oh shit! I'm trying to decide if I should use my determination or not for it. I'm just gonna roll it. I was gonna trying to decide if I wanted to use it with advantage or not because I've been rolling shitty on skill checks today. Yeah, not much better that time. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay, we'll remember that. But one thing she does tell you though, she doesn't. Let me see. Okay. Uh, so she doesn't say the center, but she does say. Uh, she says, "Fine, I'll tell you." And she gets real quiet and she says, uh, "They know I've been have a, I've been, you know, lending money to." people that I shouldn't be lending money to and uh, that's why they're that's why they're after me so I mean we so have zero reason to be friendly to you shit. yeah we have no reason to be friendly with you either you literally financed a guy that was trying to sabotage our bar 
I mean, I'm sure at the time you didn't realize that might come back to bite you in the ass, but why would we try to help you when you literally funded a guy that was trying to, you know, destroy our bar? She says, uh, you know, you don't, you don't have to, that's for sure. But uh, I'd really appreciate it. And I also have, um, well, you know what? I, I need the help, so I'm just, I'm not even going to be cheap here. Uh, I'll give you guys, for now, 10 platinum pieces to hide me. And then after, I need, I need you to hide me for half a 10 day. I only need five days. And then if you guys keep me successfully hidden and don't talk and anything, I'll give you 40 more platinum pieces total after I'm done, you know, as long as I stay quiet and hidden. It's 700 gold total, by the way, guys. It's 100 gold each initially, and then another 400 gold afterwards to split. I don't know. I mean, we could at least have her under our nose. I mean, making a loan isn't uh, a direct uh, antagonistic act towards us specifically. It could have just been he wanted the loan and she provided it. Uh, you know, it just makes her a bank, not necessarily, you know, somebody was trying to, to bring us down herself. Yeah, I'm she okay says, with it as long as we uh, as long as we cage her up. Hope she likes rats. Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> I think I mean there's we have room. There's plenty of space for her, but I think we you know I'd, you know we'll just we'll just tell her. Um, yeah, then then we'll do it. Well, I guess Akasha, are you are you are you in on this? You okay? That's fine. All right then. Um, assuming that there isn't any, you know, anything that looks suspicious afterwards, then she can have one of the spare rooms, but she's going to be watched the entire time. She says, yeah, I know I deserve that. And she says, uh, when Emic asked to borrow money, I didn't know. He said he wanted to take care of some competitors, but I had no idea that it was you. I don't even, I have nothing personal against you guys. It was just business. So I hope you guys can see it like that. And, uh, and I'll be quiet and that I've, I, won't cause too much trouble and i do understand that yeah i'm going to be watched so i mean obviously i'm not going to be trying to leave or anything anyway because that kind of defeats the purpose of hiding so i'm not going to go anywhere but if you feel better then yes you can watch me so all right it's not our i want to give her a room that doesn't have windows do we have any that are like in the center i think we had one right that is that is uh in the middle still and we're padlocking that door <laughs> Um, I want to ask her what made her think to come to us out of all the people she loans money to. Yeah, uh, she said uh, that she um, heard about how uh, MX uh, attempt afterwards. You know, because again, she didn't know what he was going to do exactly, but afterwards, she did hear about it because he was, you know, complaining to her, and about how you guys totally thwarted MX attempts and so she knows that you guys are crafty and again she's heard of some of the deeds that you guys have done around town and the main thing is is that again this is a few days after the girl on villa bloodbath uh you know she realizes that uh you guys have um, been able to not arouse suspicion by the guards and that's the one thing because the city watch basically kind of just you know does whatever they want kind of thing and so they'll like go into your place even if you don't let them in but they don't seem to come fuck with you guys' tavern they seem to trust you guys for some reason and she's realized that she figures it's probably one of the safer places in Waterdeep if not the safest place to hide her so well the best place we can put her because uh, the, the rooms that are on the on my floor on the second floor that for me to be able to get around there basically all of my windows there's no way to get around that uh, the one that's beside me actually has a window and a uh, porch access or a uh, balcony access um, so like that's not good plus I'd have to go a long ways around to be able to get to her so the best one would be on the third floor with uh, with you guys um, and it shares a wall with ghost so ghost will hear if she's doing anything to you know strange there there is a window um, maybe we can secure the window so she can't open it what I don't want is I don't want her sending out snakes I don't want her running business from inside of our tavern where this business could be bringing trouble to us but she would be right next to Eldor's door there so between she basically would be between Eldor and Ghost on the third floor did you mention that out loud about her conducting business did you say that out loud yeah I think so I think I would just say well you can under the stipulation that you're not running business from inside our tavern she says nah because again if I run business out of there then there's a trail that could be coming back in there and that's and that's exactly what we won't allow yeah, even if you don't trust me, you know, I don't want to get myself busted. I mean, I, I don't want to get you guys busted either, you know, whether or not you believe that. But I could get my own location away doing that. So, no, that's not going to be happening. I'm truly going to be laying low. 
In fact, what I'm going to do, I actually have myself a good, a really good disguise kit. I'm going to make myself look like a man instead, you know, beard and all the whole nine yards and change my, temporarily change my name. I'll go Jorn. That's what I'll go with. And uh, I'm just going to lay low. And uh, if you want me to, I'll even do some chores and stuff. And then, like, you can just say that you hired me or something. You know, maybe I'm a new employee or something like that. Uh... I'll sweep the floors, whatever. I don't give a shit. You know, pay you guys back for being so cool to me. Oh, and by the way, she says, um, uh, and also, you know, since you guys are, you know, so cool and, and, and just not going to tell everybody that I'm hiding out here and not going to tell the Zenarim. So your role would have been good enough. I did read a little bit further. So she does have an affiliation with the Zenarim. So because it says that if you guys were because um, you guys could have chosen to join the Zenarims if you wanted to and you go to what you would have gotten more renown for hiding her. So uh, so she okay. is friendly with them at least in some kind. So so she did. She did mention that and says, I know we don't we have a one of my friends good friends is an enemy of yours but uh maybe we could still work together she said that earlier so her good friends is an enemy of ours who's who is this this enemy. Yeah. oh just in general not a specific person yes 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 yeah okay. and she says but uh i'll you know i'll make myself look like a man and i'll try to act like a man you know and uh sweep do i can be a barkeep i can wash the dishes whatever you know just make it look i'm working there for you guys all right well, I'll, I mean, I'll say this to Akasha and Eldor. Um, she doesn't know who Woody is, but I'll say um, we can have Woody keep an eye on her. Because, of course, that means, you know, 24-hour uh, making sure that she's not doing anything and, and she wouldn't be able to see him, so. That's a good idea. All right, well, it, it sounds like this is an amenable offer. Um, I suppose we can do this. If, if, you know, five days seems reasonable. Uh, but if anything occurs that is uh, untoward or certainly brings any suspicious on uh, on us, then you know we can uh, adjust the agreement as necessary. No funny business. I'm watching. She says, "Yeah, now's uh, now's not the time for me to be doing any funny business. So I promise I'll be good, and I'm good for the money. <clears throat> I'm absolutely so good for the money." And she that... hands you guys ten platinum pieces. Okay. And four. She says forty more, four times that when a. Uh, after the half a 10 day is that each or the 40 more or is that just another you know f total total okay so so 50 platinum pieces total 10 now 40 later well it's 10 each right just, it's, hmm. all right fine 10 each now and then just 40 total uh, you know after that i mean i'm not made of money all right well it's 100 gold each right now and then and then uh, another 400 to split later Okay. <clears throat> uh, right. I'm still out of my initial question, though, then, was why why are you coming to us to hide you? I mean, you have friends amongst the Zents. Don't they have better places? You just don't want to sleep in their sewers? She says, well, they did, but ever since the bloodbath over Gralhan Villa, City Watch has really been cracking down on them in the Black Network, so there's uh, not a whole lot of places to hide from them anymore. And uh, I'm hoping I don't get brought down with the whole rest of the damn group. I'm guessing they're all going down from the way things are going. Including Manchun. And I'm just staring at her to see what her reaction is when I say that name. Roll an insight, please. That's a good one. And she just looks at you and honestly, from what you can tell, just says, I'm not, who's Manchun? I'm not okay. sure who that is. And I believe that she... And she seemed honest. Okay. Yeah. From what you can tell, she seemed honest, like, you know, kind of quizzical. Hm, who's that? You know, like not being overly cautious or she didn't get nervous, none of that. So she, okay. from what you can tell, doesn't know who that is. Doesn't recognize the name. Well, I mean, because I was, I was just, I wasn't sure at first I was telling the truth about Manchun not being part of the Zentrum or not. But, uh, you know, if she doesn't know who he is, then either he just disguises himself and uses a fake name or something maybe or he's just you know not part of the centrum okay all right then i guess in that case then we agree uh and we'll set her up in that upstairs you know room that, um uh, on the map that i dropped in discord it's the center one on the right so basically okay. just south of ghost and north of eldor that one okay. it does have a window but i think we would probably secure that window so that it can't be opened it may not be openable anyways i don't know but uh, secure that so it can't be open just in case, and then uh, ask uh, uh, Woody to keep an eye on her. <clears throat> okay. And uh, I think we tell Woody the truth of who she is, 
Um, and then we tell the rest of the, the people, you know, Sancho and everybody else in the bar that it's, that his name is Yorl and it's the, you know, just a dwarf that we're going to hire on to help out. Okay. That was going to be my question as if you guys were talking to Sancho and, well, I know you wouldn't talk to the patrons, but you know, cause so Woody knows the truth and then Sancho just thinks that J it's just Jorn. The new, oh, Jorn. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. It doesn't really matter, but the new male dwarf, uh, I guess you can say, um, you know, server or, you know, cleaning staff or whatever the hell, you know? Hiring hand, hired hand. So, okay, that works for me. And everything goes off without a hitch. So, um, we can actually just, if you want to, we'll just add the money now. Because, again, as long as you guys don't, you know, rat her out or fuck with her or anything like that too much, then everything, the, the half a 10 day goes off without a hitch. And that is the end of the chapter. So, okay. I wonder how that's like. Where is that going to play in later? I wonder. We just, Again, we just uh, have, have this lady hang out for, for a few days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it, basically. So you guys are like still in the process. I mean, when the chapter starts, she'll, I'm assuming, still be there. But I mean, there's again, as long as you guys don't rat her out or anything like that, then there's nothing uh, uneventful that happens. Just you guys' as usual business, and she actually does like she says she's going to, and doesn't cause any problems. So. All right. Well, then, in the sake of wrapping up, uh, you know, stuff that we acquired and everything, the the money that or the bars that Eldor found, how many was that? The gold bars that he found in the stables. Do you remember? Four, like you can scroll would... back and look if you need to. There's uh, eight of them. One, one ounce. <laughs> <laughs> was it was just a really heavy like... ounce. Like he was yeah. walking. He was walking funny from that one ounce. It was just really heavy. Yeah, I think it was eight bars. bars. And yeah. there were two hundred fifty gold each. Take a look. Hang on, Esther. I think that's what it was. Two hundred or two hundred fifty, something like yeah, that. I think so. Something like that. Let me double check. And that was in this stable. Along with some horseshoes, some speedy horseshoes. Yeah, yeah I'm looking at them here. They say uh, two hundred and fifty gold a piece. Weight five, times yeah. eight bars. All right. Yep. So... Two fifty gold a piece. Five pounds. Yep. Then assuming we're splitting that, that's two thousand gold. Um, so that's six hundred sixty-six gold each, um, and then plus the platinum. Oh, I guess I could just do it that way. With the well, <clears throat> add the ten platinum for everybody, but the extra forty platinum. I'm basically everybody got ten platinum, and I'm just going to add the uh, the forty platinum in for the for the uh, uh, split up, which is I think eight hundred, right? Let's see. Yeah, so eight hundred gold plus the ten platinum, if we count the bars plus the plus the uh, platinum that she gave us initially. So nine hundred gold each total. Yep. Okay. You guys want to add that, or you want me to add it? I put it on mine. I put the ten okay. platinum and the eight hundred forty-eight gold. Um, you guys are rich now. We're you know out of time anyways. Sako, do you know what you like? Do you, do you already have a plan? I guess of what your next level looks like, or do you want to do that next week? <clears throat> or you can look it over, you know, and then tell Ben and, and he can do it or something. Yeah, we can just, if you guys want to take a look this week and take care of it. I know uh, what my stuff is. Mine will only take a second. Sako's the only one that's, it's, uh, you know, time constraint. Yeah, I'll take a look at it this week and then let Ben know. Um, if you could, just uh, add that gold pieces to me and we'll be even. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I want to ask Dell about a like a magical means of disguise. If there's any magic items he's familiar with that would uh, uh, allow one to disguise oneself. Okay. I know there would be anyways. It's just a matter of what he might have available. I guess this would be more of a species question. Uh, Eldor, does he have humanoid feet, or is he still kind of bovine? Feet? I don't know that one, Holmes. Yeah, I was kind of looking for, at him um, too. For his race. I think they're human feet. I would. I can't imagine they'd be hooves. Let me look. What's the? Out of curiosity, are you like looking for boots? Are you looking for? Are you seeing if you can put on these horseshoes? Is that what you're trying for? If you have yeah. hooves, you can wear these horseshoes. Yeah. If I'm hooved and I have uh, horseshoe-like feet, then I can uh, boost speed thirty feet. <laughs> I'll be a, a fast uh, pack mule. All 
It doesn't specify. Let me look at the. Oh, well, from the pictures, they're wearing boots. So, yeah, all the pictures show them with just regular feet. Ah, gotcha. I think tieflings have hooves, though, now that I think about it. I don't use tieflings in my setting, but, uh, but they would be in this one because this is the default setting. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, double check your guys' character sheets. I think I got the money right on there. And then I took those gold bars out of your inventory, uh, Sako, because we're just going to assume you guys went by the bank and cashed them in. So. Sounds good. Okay. Did I get it right, everybody? Your guys' amount of gold? Because it Mine's was 900 good. gold and 10 platinum PC, right? Yeah, I did mine already. Mine's good. So I, I think you guys should all be good then? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Cool, guys. Yeah, so, um, G, I will check that because, yeah, Dell's getting new stuff all the time, too. So uh, we'll say that you went by there and asked him about that. So he's going to keep an eye out for you on uh, cool. cool, you know, like a ch some chin putty and like a fake mustache or something. So. No, like ma specifically a hat of disguise is what I want. It's a magic item called a hat of disguise. But any kind of a, it doesn't need to be a hat. I don't care. But some kind of a magical item that will uh, allow me to magically disguise myself. Okay. <clears throat> um, I cool. moved. I, I'm storing. It's a thousand and fifty total between the ten platinum and the money I already had stored. I'd, I'd put away 150 gold. Uh, so between the 800 gold, the ten platinum, and then the gold I already had, I'm leaving a thousand and fifty stored in my room and locked in. <clears throat> and then okay. a, I'm carrying just carrying a smaller amount around. I'm not going to carry that kind of money around. All right. Okay, and I'm ready to do my level at least. Sako, if you gotta if you gotta drop and you know check your things, um, I'll go over. Uh, I'll help Ben go over your sheet too, Sako, to make sure that the um, that your modifier is being added correctly because it definitely wasn't there for for the heels at least. Sounds good. I'll take a look at it and uh, contact <clears throat> you before the next game. I'll post uh, post something on Discord. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. See you, dude. See ya.